Wake up, gamers, because you're listening to Big Think Dimension with KZ Excellent. I'm optimistic about things. Dan and Bob Video Game. You see that mountain? You can fuck another man on that mountain. <laughs> and Mr. Feel. What? Consensual sexual intercourse? No, thank you, ma'am. I have kings waiting for me online. Here on Gigaboots. So do you guys think that there's a... Uh like a brand manager deep in deep in like the bowels of Disney who has to get up in front of like a like the board and be like according to my research the internet has decided that Yoda is addicted to ketamine and also quote runs over bitches in his 2006 Honda Civic in quote yeah probably i feel like that's a pretty good job uh it involves reading twitter all today mm. so i imagine that uh, death would probably be preferable. Mm. I, Your Honor, Twitter, death. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, it's like the guy who joins the FBI and is like, "I'm gonna make a difference in the world." And it's like, "Uh, we need you to monitor these five extremist Discord channels forever." Oh, like oh no, like all they do is post about. This character from Fate Go. Who the fuck is Astolfo? 25 of them are pornography. <laughs> Why is there so much fucking feet? I what? can't look my wife in the face anymore. Look, it's, it, it's better that we have one person's life ruined than uh, the whole thing's just dictated by a robot like WB is now. Uh, that's, that's true. <laughs> You'd rather ruin one life than literally... Guys, can you imagine the nightmares that come out of that? It's like every <laughs> joke tweet ever written about, I made a script, watch every James Bond movie, here's a new one. <laughs> I'm just imagining, because there was a... There, it's like that episode of South Park from 20 years ago, where Cartman dresses up as a robot, and the exact same thing happens. They take him to Hollywood executives. He's like a... Adam Sandler falls in love with a girl, but she's a golden retriever, and all the executives start <laughs> furiously scribbling. <laughs> you see that one? That's good. I looked into the WB thing, and it's they have an AI machine now that will go, oh, we could put this guy in the movie? All right, uh, our AI says that it'll do make this much money in this country if he's in it. That is going to cause them... They're going to greenlight, like, three things... <laughs> All three will will bomb, yeah. and that'll be the end of that. Yeah, yeah, but maybe it'll be something like uh, I don't know. Our new action star is shifts through notes. Cuba Gooden Jr. And I feel like this will just end up where anyone who hasn't been in a popular movie in the last five years will never get work if this succeeds, because it'll just it'll the algorithm is entirely dependent on. Provable success within a recent time period. WB's like, oh, I need a win. WB's yeah. just like, uh, for some reason, every single movie we're making from three years is by Happy Madison Productions. Huh. <laughs> and they're only being released in Jersey and South Florida. <laughs> Half of them Dan, are tied to Netflix. <laughs> Dan's like... Uh, for everybody I know wants to go see them for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me getting carried away by a mob of people, and I'm like, no, no, <laughs> no, I don't want, I don't want to see Jack and Jill too. No. <laughs> it's the it's that, or they try to get other fucking bad studios and creators, and we got epic movie reboot. Oh. No. Don't forget they always have to appeal to the Chinese market. Donnie Yan's gonna be in every movie. Even Epic Movie 2? Oh, yeah, of course. I feel like oh. he might quit. Have we accounted for the fact that humans may not go along with this plan? <laughs> not for a second. <laughs> okay. I feel like when they bring him the script where he, he runs a fast food Chinese place, he might just turn it down. <laughs> and then they're like, here's, here's 50 million dollars. And he's like, do you do you want me do you want me to put in offensive offensive buck teeth or are we not going that far? <laughs> I was I was gonna say that they don't have the money to do this, but it's like no, nah, that Paramount might not though. <laughs> Never underestimate how far a company will get itself in the hole, thinking one big thing will pull them out. 
sometimes a company will look at a hole. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Be like, I bet if we fill it with money, we can walk across. Uh, that's part of the plot for Disney's movie Holes. <laughs> I was wondering if that's what Game Pass was. <sighs> Uh, if, we I, fill, yes. if we fill a hole with money, we can walk across. Yeah, that's what Game Pass is. Yeah. All I know about holes is that um, there's a character in part six of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure that just has the exact same backstory as the protagonist of holes. You're fucking kidding well, that me. that fucked up. And it's like the villain. What? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we- where it's like uh, shoes fell from the sky and he found the shoes and got arrested and sent to jail. Oh my god, it is! <laughs> okay we need to move on <laughs> okay what's up this is our video game podcast big think dimension <laughs> yeah i figured out talk about the best place to barf after you eat five cinnabon bites at a taco bell <laughs> oh man you can get through five without barfing <laughs> bob i can get through eight i Ooh, i know this from if experience you eat it really fast it only counts as one <laughs> Dan, are these like the things? Because I just imagine, because ice, they're iced and they have filling, right? Uh, no, the the filling is the icing. It's just it's, okay. So they're it's just fried. They're just, it's on. The, yeah, I just imagine it, it being that shit because I haven't eaten one in so long. Yeah, I can't. They just touch your teeth and you feel the pain like your teeth. Screw. No, no, no. This is but, not good for teeth. But you know what is that? The um Pizza Hut Cinnabon stuff that that literally yeah. feels like that. Yes, it is. It's I, disgusting. Yeah. It's like reject Pillsbury Doughboy dough that isn't cooked. <laughs> no, um, no. and it's covered in Cinnabon bullshit syrup and buttercream frosting. Oh, I was thinking of um, I was thinking of like the Domino's cinnamon bread thing where that comes with a cup of icing for you to drizzle. Oh over no, this it. is oh. vastly worse. Vastly worse. Oh. That's, but it was already so bad. Uh, Bob, you've had cinnamon sticks at some point, right? I think so. Okay, like you've I- also had those Cinnabon things from Pizza Hut. Yeah, the, the Cinnabon from Pizza Hut's one of the worst tasting desserts I've had at any of these like fast food joints. Yeah, like I can't, I can't imagine one being worse. <laughs> like the the Taco Bell sandwich twists are just not good, but they're bad in a reasonable way that right. doesn't feel like I'm dying. Right, they're serviceable, and you don't <laughs> feel like life is passing from you when you eat them. <laughs> Whereas the pizza at Cinnabon things, I think you ate one. Yeah, um, yeah no, I, I, I wasn't eating any more of so that. So I ate the rest of them. Uh, it is it is like you left out a, a tiny cuts of Pillsbury dough on a sidewalk <laughs> to cook for about 10 minutes and then covered it in fucking cinnamon syrup and it was and, and buttercream frosting. And it's just it it's gross. It doesn't taste like it's cooked. Hungry Howie's is still the only pizza joint with a good dessert option. Yeah, because they have streusel bread. Yeah, streusel stuff is really good. Yeah, their streusel bread actually is really solid. I feel too like, good. I feel like if we ever move out of the Southeast United States, we I'm gonna miss Howie's and I'm gonna miss Public Subs, and that's about it. You're gonna miss yeah. Whataburger. And uh, Whataburger. I could move to Texas and still get Whataburger. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the Big Think Crew. Sip. <laughs> Just sitting video out here. games. Video ga- <laughs> I'm your host, Dan Video Games. I'm coming over to CB Radio is uh Bob Video now, Game. Oh my god. <laughs> now Dan. Uh huh. I know you're you are a person who has a lot of time on, on their hands. <laughs> <laughs> but I need you to talk about video games you played this week. Uh actually, you know, it's funny that you say that. Uh it's all smash. It's all smash. Oh, okay. um, but it's okay. Oops, all smash. Uh, I have an interesting story to tell relating to video games I've played this week. <clears throat> oh, no. So there's a multi-mod launcher, as they call it, for Smash Melee. And it integrates a number of really neat mods for Super Smash Brothers Melee. Uh, widescreen support, which is really cool. Um Let's see. They also make uh, more levels tournament legal, which is an interesting concept. Uh, they built, they removed, <laughs> they removed an infinite the ice climbers could do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they uh, removed the wobbles. Okay. And then, yeah, yes, the yes, built in wobbling band is what they call that. It's really mm-hmm. funny. Um, and then yeah. they, they have just lose. Uh, it, it, it just, it literally, uh, if Nana hits the opponent with more than three different moves, the opponent is freed from the grab. Uh, so, 
Mm. Uh, there's also an auto-enforced ledge grab limit. So this is what this... It takes the amount of times a player has grabbed the ledge into account when deciding the winner of a match during timeouts. If one player exceeds 45 ledge grabs, the victory is awarded to the other player. So, so imagine you end a timed match. You both have one stock. It gives it to the guy who didn't exceed 45 ledge grabs. <laughs> These are all like what happens is you can flash this thing to a memory card or rather you can transfer the save that is this mod to a memory card, a GameCube one. Uh, and then you just have a sma like a different save file that's a more normal looking Smash Melee save file. And when you go into the name entry screen under Versus, it just boots the mod. It like hijacks it and asks you, "Hey, what do you want to use?" And it gives you this full list of things. Uh, personally, as someone who owns an HDMI adapter for the GameCube, which is a really great way to play GameCube games, the widescreen thing was the coolest thing. It was really awesome to get to see the game fill you know, a 16 by 9 TV and still look really great. Um, I didn't try most of the other options except for the lag reduction feature, uh, which was to combat lag caused by HDMI-based displays uh, because, you know, Smash Melee community, they don't, they don't want to use HDMI, they don't want to use LCDs, they want to use CRTs. So, so the idea behind this mod is that it's supposed to remove 20.83 milliseconds to counteract the display's lag. Uh, so I booted it up, and I went to uh, Dr uh, Fountain of Dreams, which is the Kirby level with the uh, really low-resolution reflections, and it started shitting and farting. Like, the frame rate started really tanking, and it was unreal. I was like, holy shit, is this thing... Like, I came in here to test out this mod and do a, an episode of Button to Pixel on it. It's just... just is it on fire? I'm so scared. What's happening? And I, I play a few more matches and it just consistently runs at like 45 frames per second, 53 frames per second. I'm like, this is unreal. So I messaged the dude who made this mod and I'm like, hey, um, we need to talk discreetly. And they're like, yeah, what's up? And I'm like, uh, this thing's on fire. We need to talk discreetly. <laughs> and they're like, oh, okay. Uh, turns out this person, this person watched Button to Pixel and that may have been the thing that inspired them to make this feature. Uh, after working with them for, I don't know, uh, this literally a whole day of my week was taken up with soft modding a Wii, figuring out how to do things, figuring out how to do other things, capturing it and using frame rate analysis tools to prove it's running at like 48 frames per second. Um, he figured it out after like doing some tests and it's now fixed. So multi-mod launcher, uh, now doesn't have that issue um so that's pretty cool but i still haven't done a button to pixel to prove that it removes 20.83 milliseconds either way for me a filthy casual the widescreen mod is the coolest shit in this and since the gamecube has like their affordable options for hdmi outs on the gamecube that look incredibly good i think this is pretty cool at the same time though uh as a filthy casual um I I like I like Ultimate more. I just wish it had less input lag. That's it. That's all. Input lag. I feel like there's. Don't forget then. Uh, you don't have to call yourself official filthy casual because we have the OLED that already reduces the input lag. I mean, it's true. <laughs> if everyone at these Smash tournaments just had an L an OLED TV, <laughs> that's all. They're like, we can only afford QLEDs. <laughs> They're the same price. <laughs> <laughs> They uh, were lied to by Linus Tech Tip. God damn you, Linus. Linus Tech Tip said these were great. He said it while he was trying to keep the bills from falling out of his pockets. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. and you know, uh, the input latency on our TV is really great. Uh, and I'm so I'm glad that LG finally decided to make a smaller one. Problem, it's only seven inches smaller, so it's still 48 fucking inches, which is huge. Yeah. Yeah, it's still enormous. It's fucking enormous. It's so nuts. Um, but they're advertising it as a computer monitor. It's true, and honestly, I may end up using it as that. I don't know. <laughs> I might, I might get another OLED. I don't, I don't know, guys. But uh, oh, uh, oh, oh no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, oh yes. No, you guys need to realize I, I've been needing to replace this 1080p monitor I'm editing all this shit on for a really long time. I just haven't because I'm like. 
what am I going to replace it with? And 4K was really expensive for a super fucking long time. And I was like, getting a color accurate monitor that is 4K is nearly impossible. So I didn't have any good options for the longest time. Uh, I might go with this. I don't know. But either way, my point is, I'm glad LG's making a smaller OLED. I wish they would make an even smaller one because I want people to be reasonably able to afford this fucking TV because the input latency is great. Uh, it's like, what, five milliseconds off from a perfect score? Assuming CRTs are what you consider a perfect score. Um, but yeah, no, really great. Um, really cool mod. Looking forward to testing the input latency on it at some point. But yeah, Smash Smash Melee and Smash Ultimate is all I've played in the last week. Because uh, I've been editing the Game of the Year podcast, Extravaganza. <laughs> Brought to you by Whataburger. Very exciting. It's, it's And audible. And Audible. And Golden Corral. <laughs> <laughs> and you need to improve. Uh, it was really perfect that that Junichi Masada uh, category <laughs> that they were in, in the part of the podcast extravaganza, comes out on the exact same day as the Pokemon Direct. But yeah, that's all I Less played. Less than 24 hours. Yeah, no, it was perfect. We could not have planned that. It was literally like six hours after that thing premiered. <sighs> yeah. So that's all for me. Uh, hey, Bob. Hey, Dan. What have you been playing? Uh, I, I tried to catch up on a bit of control. I want to finish that game. It's really cool so far. But we talk about that a lot more in the game of the year, so I'm not going to talk about it more here. Okay. Like They can wait. <gasps> um, mm -hmm. Something I played before game of the year but didn't talk about at all mm -hmm. was uh, <laughs> Super Lucky's Tale. Oh, you played Super what? Lucky's Tale. Oh. That's, that's cool. What are you playing it on? It's on the Game Pass, so I played it for free on the Xbox One X. What's your Game Pass? So Xbox One X. Um, Exclusive. Even on that, even on the X, it just doesn't run well. I'm so tired of this gen. <laughs> it's, it's That's insane. insane, isn't it? Wasn't it a fucking VR game? Yeah. It was made with Unity, and I guess not that well. I don't but it, it looks so nothing. How does it not run well? I don't know. Like, it doesn't look good. It doesn't play well. It seems like it has no interesting ideas what to, what to do with its 3D platformer. Oh, that's I've a played, shame. I played like two levels and was like, I, I think I'm done for good. I, I don't ever want to touch this again. Oh, great. Now I need to play it so we can have a conversation next week. Um, I also played a tiny bit of um, Ukulele, the new one, because that's... Oh, wait, that was free on Epic Game Store. You mean Ukulele and the Impossible Lair? Yeah, and the and Invisible Mirror or something. What? <laughs> no, it is the Impossible Layer. I would just think some Kirby game. Yeah, no, you're... Oh, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror? There we go. Um, that. That's right. really neat so far. KZ talked a lot about that uh, mm -hmm. earlier. I, I finally got a chance to try it out. It's, it's a pretty neat game. I want to play more of it. It seems like it has some uh, ideas. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. Yeah, that, that's one thing they really should have fixed. Like it seems like you can go into the settings and lower it. He needs to like he just needs a different like a voice left. clip. <laughs> like it's, it's like everything else I'm okay with because they cut it back so much over the first one. But Yuka, uh, 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 uh. they just the worst. Did the first game have sound. full voice acting even, and you could just set it to that? Did it? I don't remember that. I, I think just remember. It did. The, I think they were like. I think they were like, we have full voice acting, and then people are like, we want the sounds, and they're like, well, we have a sound option too. I, I don't remember that at all because when I played it, they, they had a they had they had the sound option, which was ah 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 ah, and then they had a setting that said make them do it less, where it's ah ah ah, and then that's it, and then the rest of the text appeared. Maybe it was like a Kickstarter vote, and the, and the vo actual voice acting lost. <laughs> yes. Uh, did they remember your roots? I definitely remember discussions about them just having voice acting. Anything yeah. would be better than what Yuka does. Anything. Yuka's is maybe the funniest banjo as voice ever. It's so awful. I guess that's really it's all. Like I... He's constant. He's constantly reacting to drinking something yummy. Uh, ah. Okay, yeah, I don't think there's anything else I played. But uh, see, if they had full voice acting, then we could have gotten Steve Bloom. Oh my God, stop! What do you mean they want us to take down the bee? Uh, 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 uh. What the fuck, man? 
But that's all you played? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, hey, Mr. Feel. Yes. What'd you play? Uh, I played a couple things. I played some things I got on the Steam sale. First is uh, Fightin' Rage. It's uh, an old game. It's a beat-em-up. It's a more, um, like, combo-focused beat-em-up. Yeah, I remember so, I, I, like, I talked there's, about there, this one there's even a beginning of the year Yeah, or so. you literally talked about this one 11 months ago on this podcast, Bob. And also, uh, uh By the way, this it. is the first anniversary of Big Think to mention, so we did it. We survived a year, everybody. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ugh. We lived. It'll be tragic when six months from uh, now we have to replace KZ with yet another editor because it takes the soul of the editor. No, <laughs> I've been I've I've pl- uh, I've been having fun with it. I I don't like how sometimes the story becomes indie creates esque. That must mean it's good. Where uh, you get like an ending, you get the, the 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 normal ending where if you do nothing weird, you just play through the game and don't take any detours or anything. You get an ending that's like, yeah, you stopped the evil mutant general, but so many people died. At what cost? If only there had been a better way. And this game has like 10 endings. There's like an endings chart you can look at. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of motivated to go back and try doing some of that again because you're motivated. Yeah, I'm motivated. Uh, the only thing I really don't like about it is uh, it in visually it looks real cool. It looks kind of like a Neo Geo pocket game, but like with more colors. It's a little bit cheesecake, especially if you're uh, playing as Ricardo, the grappler, because you can just do shit like, OK, I'm going to do my combo. Then I'm going to shore you can you then I'm going to do my spinning lariat in the air. Then I'm going to combo you again and do a throw at the end. And it just eradicates any nor- non-boss enemy. They just get erased. Huh. Yeah, I didn't play the, the grappler. Uh, although I don't like how sometimes the game cheats. And it's like, this is combo based, but fuck you, you motherfucker. You're trying to trick me. Because <laughs> there's a there was a part where I was fighting a boss and I would I was playing as the grappler. So I'd do a combo, pop him into the air with the shore. You can do the thing, do a kind of and I couldn't complete the second combo. But everybody has a thing where they have a combo that ends in a small grab. And I'm like, well, that will magnetize them to me, so it won't matter that they're falling too fast. So I do it, and I get them in the grab, and they go, no, and shove me away. Because it's it's like, it's like, you motherfucker, you don't get to combo me this long. <laughs> and it just bounces me away. They flash like green, which is just them going, no. You don't get it. Uh... That actually reminds me, I watched Dino Please or Dino Plus uh, play through the bouncer earlier this week. And when, as Kole Fo, they unlocked the seven kick move, and then Duragon would just fall over on the first kick and get back up. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, other enemies get trapped in this combo, but Duragon's like, oh, you hit me. I'm falling down. Now I'm standing up. Fuck you. <laughs> it's a. Uh- so, so he's like uh, Virgil in Devil May Crap, where, no, you, you mother, you don't get to combo me this long. Here's a cut scene of me rolling to safety. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Which is what that game. What? Yeah, uh, in the final boss of DMC Devil May Crap, uh, if you're if you're beating on Virgil too long, he'll be like, no, and it'll you'll get like a short little vignette of him like rolling away and standing up because they couldn't balance the game right. I thought it was going to be like a Kingdom Hearts thing where they all have like internal values where if you hit it enough, they just say, no, I'm I'm my turn now. It like zooms in and he like rolls away and stands up as like, eh, and then it like pulls back out and the fight goes on. If that's even still in the game, that might have been one of the things they patched out like uh, Virgil's hat. <laughs> they were like, uh, Oh, all, all the fedora. What were we thinking of with the fedora? Take it out. Take it's it out. It's like someone <laughs> someone patched their high school photos. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't wear jinkos. That didn't happen. <laughs> uh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't wear my jeans backwards like crisscross. That never happened. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Why do you look twenty years uh, older in this yearbook photo? <laughs> <laughs> because it's the director's cut. <laughs> Uh, but I played Blasphemous, which is uh, a Metroidvania. It's one of those games that is Dark Souls-like, 
Uh, at first, I was real positive on it because I was like, wow, this feels pretty good. And oh, no. the combat is kind of deliberate. You know, it's, you know, it's not like super actiony. It's just a 2D Metroidvania. It has really good sprite art. If nothing else, this game has good sprite. Yeah, art. no, the art looked really nice and I was interested in it because of that. But then I got halfway through and I'm like, I haven't gotten any abilities. Like I've gotten, um, I got like, a, I got two spells, which are just attacks. They have no other uses. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten like, like new attacks through the level up system. But I'm like, and I, but I'm like, I've passed all kinds of places where it seems like you would have a double jump. Do you get any traversal abilities in this? No. You're telling me you're getting keys for all these areas. That's the way you unlock traversal. Is that what's uh, happening? It's. it's it's keys or yeah, it's just keys. Oh God, like, man. Least, <laughs> there, there's, there's apparently one, a one thing you get, but it requires like an, it, it's basically like you use a node <laughs> and do something with the node, but they're only in very specific places. Bob, remember that time we streamed that Metroidvania? Eric tunes into the stream and he's like, how dare you call it bad? And then he comes over and calls it and just goes, it's mid. <laughs> I, I couldn't even fucking remember what game it was. An that was important distinction. That was um. But I just oh my god, Valdis Abyssal story. No, no, no. It was definitely a they they did they last year or so revamped the whole thing. Apparently, God, what was it called? I have no idea. It was so it was, forgettable. It was those, one of those games that was announced like five years before it came out, and it actually got a demo in Best Buy for the PS4. Yeah. God, what was this? Oh my God! This is I'm sorry, everyone, that I put brain spiders into Bob in the middle of field talking about this game. <laughs> but I just fell out because it was like it stopped doing new stuff. Yeah, that's fair. And it and it was entirely combat focused, so like there was no real platforming challenges. If there was platforming, it was very simple platforming. And here's a bunch of enemies to fuck you. Oh, the best kind. So I'm like, eh, I'm not really feeling this. And there's and there's not even that many bosses because or enemy types, because guess what? Pretty sprites are expensive. Mm -hmm. So I it's just like, well, this isn't terrible, but I really don't want to play it anymore. So you I notice stopped. that happens a lot with with a lot of people trying to make a souls esque game where they do it, but then there's not many bosses at all. Like the surge yeah. has like the surge has like five bosses in it. Like if nothing else, every Dark Souls game has like forty bosses. Uh, the other thing I played was I uh, played Monster Boy, or Wonder Boy, and the Cursed Kingdom, uh, the newer one. Uh, I'm, I'm I played that about this up to make sure I have the correct one in my brain. Is it the one where he becomes the Cursed Kingdom? Yes. <laughs> uh, I played like three and a half hours. I got entirely through the first major like area where you get the first plot coupon plot, plot coupon coupon yeah the plot coupon where it's like go get the four orbs and i got the first orb so i got the first plot coupon <laughs> that is brilliant <laughs> that's so much better uh, than using mcguffin <laughs> i'm probably not gonna go back to it because there's so many little things about it that irritate the shit out of me um one, they just, uh, first of all, but I'll, I'll be positive for a second. This game has incredible presentation. It looks beautiful. Like, it's all hand drawn sprites and hand drawn backgrounds. So it looks fantastic. And the music is really good. Uh, the first, once you get past the intro, you hear this, you go through the green field. So you can look up the song for uh, Mont uh, Wonder Boy in the Cursed Kingdom, Green Fields. It sounds like a Sonic Adventure track. Bob, I'm here to save you. Really good. Chasm. Chasm. Oh my god. I knew it was a single word. Right. And I spent this whole Isn't time that searching one, for it. Doesn't that one have procedural generated elements to it? Yeah. To make it bad. See, that's why I don't <laughs> that's why I don't remember because when a game says we have procedural, I just I don't even listen. I'm like, bye. I jump out a window. I just to escape. It was it was a very it was a very mid to disappointing game. The thought that it might have an update would be cool. I don't know. But the first, like, this game has status effects, and they're all terrible, because all of them are just, 
uh, just just sit still for like 15 seconds. Just waste your fucking time. Uh, why? Because because one is slow, which is you move so you move so fucking slow, it's intolerable, and it also kills your momentum when you jump. So you just can't do anything. You're just crippled. So just stand there until it wears off, asshole. And the other one, and another one is like confusion where your inputs are reversed. And it's just like, I'm just going to stand here until it goes away. Uh, hey, Bob. Um, I think this quote uh, distills chasm down to one sentence and also defines IGN as a, as an, as a, oh, output. no. Oh, no. Chasm is a lovely and fun Metroidvania with a lot of cool new ideas, even if its randomized maps are uninteresting. This That's game is cool and fun, even though it's boring. <laughs> like, yes. I don't fucking... Whatever. Whatever. Um, what's, what's I also really hate the bosses. Uh, they gave the it a 7 out of 10. Te- <laughs> sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> the, bosses, the bosses are all terrible because... There's a there's ma- you get magic in this game and instead of having like an MP bar or something that might make some measure of sense, uh, you get charges for each spell and enemies can drop new charges. So an enemy will drop like a fire icon that restores your fire spell. But since these are always required for bosses, bosses just are constantly vomiting out shitheads. And I don't mind a boss requiring me to multitask, but when it's just like. I'm just going to shit little enemies constantly, always. Like, that's so bad. That fucking sucks, dude. Come on. What are you doing? The, a boss spawning other enemies almost always means the boss is trash in every game and genre. I don't know what you're talking about. You need something to pat, pat out that boss. So in between its phases, that's just going to generate some small enemies you need no, to kill. Th- no, it's not even... It, in this game, it's not even between phases. He's just constantly spawning things as it does its circuit. Yeah, I, whenever whenever I see that sort of thing, I just immediately sink Ninja Guide in hard modes, uh-huh. which is yeah rough. But yeah, they just mm. and and there's a lot of little things like the game loves to have enemies drop out of view and smack you, mm. or um like they were more they can they cared more about. Uh, presentation than how the game played so it'll be like there'll be a decorative thing in the foreground blocking the platforms you're supposed to be jumping across uh. so I'm this I might go back to it just because it looks so pretty and sounds so good but it but that first like it started to drag near the end uh, but those are the those two those three things that, that what I play Bob I'm starting to fall asleep watching gameplay of chasm from us from 2018. Hey. Yeah, KZ talk. Yeah, KZ. All that? right. Um, what's I happening? Didn't play KZ? Much aside from my usual recording duties, uh, I finished prepping my file for the Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC. So I played a uh, played some of that, just collecting food and doing other things in that, uh, reminding myself how good the Caribbean is in that. It's real good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's about it for me though. There, oh, there's, I forgot. I've been t- I've been too busy crunching on stuff. Feel what do you have? <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Uh, I started playing Danganronpa for streams. I'll be streaming it every Sunday. Uh, yep. Uh, you will. You will have missed the second stream by the time you hear this. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm enjoying it so far. I think the characters are neat. Uh, I hope the protagonist gets run over. I also hope the guy who is like the perverted fat otaku gets put in a blender. <laughs> <laughs> what the dude who looks like a beaver? Yes. Yeah, Fuck he's great. Him. Uh. The, prote- the protagonist has a sad little twink voice. He also has a thing uh, I would call, I like to call visual novel protagonist brain. Yes. Where he is unbelievably stupid and like half the conversations will ha- go something like, uh, why, why this? And then the character will explain it to him and he'll just go, but why? <laughs> so you, so the only, oh at, le- at least in this case, it's, del- I'm sure it's deliberate because it's, kind of meta in a little bit in a little way but it's just like you are the dumbest motherfucker i have yeah. ever seen also he can't he also he can't talk to a girl without spilling his spaghetti everywhere <laughs> yeah it's always has a plate of spaghetti with him hey that's just no, it's being in his prepared oh okay. no, just wait till the second game for the spaghetti 
I, I've actually been wanting to play Danganronpa for quite a while. I still haven't, just like I haven't played Corpse Party, just like I haven't played 999. <sighs> but you know, that's okay, because I've got stuff to cheer me up. Like some what? friends, some friends I like to call the Pod Lords. <gasps> the oh fuck the Pod Lords! <laughs> pod Lords. That's right, the Pod Lords. Pod Lords such as Danny Richardson, E. Lee Broyles, Dandy Cageford, Corey Brown. Dank Mormons, Red Blaze 27, Jucifer Frost, Ace Attorney, Suzu Shiro, Emperor Zero. This is how Fluffy can still win. Hashtag thank you, Masuda. <laughs> <laughs> Every week with this shit. Oh my oh, god. No. Is it him? That's him. Oh <clears throat> no. I'm gonna time me posting the image in the Discord with me screen with me reading the name. Okay. The only ironic lingering will pod lord. <laughs> <laughs> Lil Will! Lil Will! <laughs> it isn't a gamer moment if I didn't say the N word. That's the oh text on the image. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Moon Muse Entertainment Studio. <sighs> After one movie, I've ascended past Godlord. I am now Super Godlord. Mmm. Super Godlord, Super God. This is fucking. Y you people are coming for my soul. You need to stop. <laughs> you need to stop. Yep. For anyone who didn't catch it, that that last person was not the normal one who does that. Oh no! Oh no! His position was was different. Here is what that is: the only actual unironic <laughs> Edge Maverick stand. Hashtag yeah. Stand. Oh shit! <laughs> and oh shit! That is the most incredible. <sighs> to to describe to the viewers who are just listening, they have edited Gary Busey's face on Edge Maverick. <laughs> it is so tiny. <laughs> Because they needed to fit all of Gary Busey's face underneath that fucker's hair. That is... <laughs> How did we get this? How did we get to this point? I guess we're just lucky. I, I think I'm just uh, lucky, I guess. Jesus Christ. Uh, 101 birds stole all my shades. And it's a picture of a bird wearing some shades. It's a very cool bird. This is a very cool bird. I believe we posted that bird last week. I'm gonna screen cap it again. It was a good bird. That bird, Bob? Pretty good. That's a good bird. That's a good bird. WTF Spider-Man and unknown artwork. Thank you very much to our pod lords. Thank you. Thank you, pod Thank you, pod lord. Yeah, th thanks, pod lords. And if you'd like to become a pod lord, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcast to become a pod lord. And if you uh, can't become a pod lord, you can just support us and get many benefits, such as movie commentaries, the ability to vote on what horrible movies we have to subject ourselves to and then make those commentaries, bonus armchair dev pitches, early access to Mondo Cool, that is our Dragon Ball movie review podcast, and other benefits that may or may not exist at some point. That is patreon.com slash GB podcast. For example, benefits such as social clout. <laughs> Want to impress your friends? Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a pod lord. Not sure if you know what that means. Wield your status cool. as a pod lord to loom over the lesser privileged. Yes. That's classist. Yes, it is. So we've got some news. I'm excited Damn. to talk about news. Dan, there's there's a lot of news. <laughs> yeah, uh, at least my news doesn't read like a press release, so we're going to go through that. Uh, so Jim Ryan really be out here teasing that the PS5 has, quote, some unique elements and, quote, bigger differences compared to the PS4 that have not been announced yet. Just, mm. annou just announce the backwards compatibility, please. It's just going to make an orange Julius. <laughs> I mean, rumors just, ca another set of rumors came out. Yeah, about that backwards compatibility stuff. Like another press cycle happened with that, and was like, "Come on, 
please. Here's here's the split on my timeline. It was a third of people who were like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then two thirds of people who turned into Jonathan Frakes and said, not this time. Nope. This one was made up by a writer. <laughs> it was uh, that's it's a lot for me to deal with. <laughs> I'm still going to I'm still on the side of it's happening, if only because I, I, I realized this the other day and I looked up releases to make sure I wasn't just insane. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten very many remasters lately. Yeah, I mean, yeah, medieval, yeah. but that's like it. That, I mean, that's a remake. Like it's in a new I love debating I that term. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 all a mess. <laughs> but but if they're going to be like like even from third parties, like we haven't gotten almost anything lately even stuff that we got on ps3 we have not gotten on this gen so it just makes me think if they know yeah, like that this is coming that it makes sense yeah hold I, back until then i i feel like if sony was going to release a more ps2 emulation titles uh they'd probably want to wait till the ps5 and be like hey here's our good thing yeah, because it feels like they just stopped doing PS2 games period like probably two years ago. Yeah, somewhere in the last year and a half, I feel. Yeah. Um, I think the Jack games were the last ones where they just dropped four of them at once. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was the last last time they did that. Uh, also, what's up? But yeah, but the last like third party remaster entirely has been was Onimusha Warlords, which was a year ago. Oh man, that's a cool game. <laughs> it is a cool game. It's very they have cool. swords in it. It's like they Resident Evil, but of... Japanese samurais. Mm. I love Boshido. Yeah, that's how you say that. Good job. Yeah. Uh, There's going to be a heroine in an upcoming Sony game who will just have a bow and she'll use Boshido. Actually, I made a mistake. Boshido is a character of Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Isn't it Bo Rai Cho? Yeah, it's called a bit. So moving on from these bits, <laughs> uh, we actually have leaks that it the Switch Pro is happening. Uh, they're ramping up production in this quarter for this year, and it's going to release sometime in the middle of 2020. So at least it's not November. No. Hopefully Sony doesn't Our dream. Sony doesn't unload a sawed off shotgun into my chest and go, yeah, we're releasing a middle 2022. <laughs> God, if the, if the reason that we don't know anything past like August is, oh yeah, that's when the PS5 comes out, that'd be insane. That it's an August. It's an August, oh. fuckers. <laughs> oh. uh, I'm very excited. Uh, I've read some analysts saying things about it, which I don't anticipate to be true, but I'll go ahead and read them. Uh, it'll play in 4K, and it will cost $400. I, I'm i excited. Finally, playing Link's Awakening in 4K to get the same frame rate it has now. At least then there would be an excuse. <laughs> I just want... look Like, guys, once again, the only game I played over the last week was Smash... I am absolutely fine buying a whole new box that plays Smash even prettier. <laughs> like, 100%. I put enough time in that game where it is worth it to me to do that. Uh, the only firm details we have about specs or anything else is allegedly it's being made with a magnesium alloy body to help with thermal. Mm -hmm. That's pretty fancy. Yeah, that doesn't sound fancy. It is fancy. Uh, so that's cool. Is, is it going to also be an obelisk like the Series X? <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if it'll still be portable. I I do wonder uh, because if they really wanted to hit 4K performance the easiest possible, then the smart thing to do would just make it a console. Um, then you can ramp voltages up way higher. You can have a much bigger fan in it. You don't have to run batteries, so that eliminates thermals from that. There, there's a lot of things you can do with a console. Yeah. It depends on whether the point of this thing is going to be you can play all our games nicer and at a better frame rate and they're prettier. Or if the point is going to be some new Nintendo 3DS shit where it's like, <laughs> where it's like some games will only work on the Switch Pro. Guess what? Every single port of a PS5 and Xbox Series X game will be one of those. 
uh, can't wait, can't wait let to play me explain. Starfield on my Switch. Ports of PS5 and Xbox Series X games won't exist. The CPU performance is vaster than an order of magnitude. I do not believe a Switch Pro could pack enough CPU power without just going nutso. Like, there's no way. But I, I also don't think Nintendo's in, interested in doing the fragmented user base thing that they did with the new 3DS in the new in the DSi. I think they're just going to be like this plays those games better. Hopefully, just cuz I mean, that, that's what I hope. That makes the most sense. Right. Like they they only did like two games when they did that sort of thing. Like the new 3DS, the only two games I can ever think of are Xenoblade and Man- Minecraft. That's it. Xenoblade and Minecraft, what a duo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, was there anything else? The Super Nintendo games you also need to have the new 3DS for, but that's like all that all there was. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, but th- this benefits them a lot better to just have it be one platform and one version of it runs it way better. There is there was four exclusives. Mm. Mm. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. There was Minecraft oh. and Xenoblade. Yeah. There was Fire Emblem Warriors. <laughs> I didn't even know and Fire Emblem some, Warriors came out on that. <laughs> right? Huh. It must that must have been a nightmare. And Runbo. Oh yeah, Runbo. Runbo? Runbo. Really? <laughs> Can you believe that shit? That game existed on the <laughs> What? Right? That's insane. Yeah, it says right here, new Nintendo 3DS. You know, it's amazing. Nintendo will let you develop a game for their trash cans. <laughs> Come on over with your game and deposit it in the trash. It's called the Wii U. KZ, we gotta have a talk. Feel has mandated it, and I stand by his decision. We have to talk about what, the newest Kingdom the man- Hearts game, the Elgato Gaming 4K 60S Plus. Now, <laughs> I was hearing people talk about a lot of exciting things here. Mm-hmm. When it comes to uh, when it comes to Elgato, because they got that microphone, yeah, pulse, I think it was or something. Uh, yes, or wave. It, it's wave. It's, it was it was something like that. Yeah, it's something and that just means sound. I, I missed this until I was listening to uh, I think it was Greg Miller's show where someone came in going, "This is a game changer," and it was the Elgato capture card. And one of them said, "What are you talking about? It this is a capture device that is uh, external." You can like record it on the fly the way you could do like a live game or portable. Like if you use the Aver Media cards, they could do that. You can save stuff to an SD card. It does the whole 4K 60 setup. Perfect uh, pass through on your display, uh, which is, you know, this is a card. They can do all of those things without you putting anything inside the PC for hundred dollars. Yeah. The- also, it's also it's huge. Yeah, and it is it's like a it big is, big ass big ass box. Eh, it's about the size of an external hard drive. Like looking at it, it looks like some of those you would expect. Yeah, so it, it it's not yeah, tiny. It's a, it's a bit more shocking compared to their other external offerings, which are all smaller than a PSP. Yeah, it looks like if you lined up five HDMI cables next to each other, that's about how wide it would be. And then yeah. But uh I I think it's interesting. I I think it's an interesting tool. Um, I find the use case a little questionable, a little odd, because uh, like it's neat that it can record 4K HDR gameplay, but it's recording them to an SD card. Uh, that is going to slow down rendering things off of that footage a shitload, even if you drag the footage off of the SD card onto your computer, which adds an extra step. Um, luckily, the thing can still engage with your computer via USB, but I think the the use case where this stands out as like being the most like why you would get this specific product is if you brought it to a thing or because like it recording 4K would be good. But if you already have a computer that can record and deal with 4K HDR footage, then you already have a computer that's capable of recording 4K HDR. Like mm-hmm. it's it's really complicated to figure out the exact use case for this. I was like, I, I guess you could bring it to tournaments. What tournaments are playing in HDR? Like, I feel like most tournaments of fighting games or whatever are SDR. Got to be future proof, Dan. I yeah, you're you're future proofing the hell out of me right now by saying that. Um, I think it's neat. I uh, wanted something like this years ago, 
uh, where I wanted to be able to record to SD cards. Uh, the latest class of SD card is, you know, a lot faster, so you could work directly off the SD card with that, but uh, mm -hmm. they're more expensive accordingly. Like, so what are we going to fight about? I don't know. I wish it had... I don't think we're going to fight about anything. You can ask Feel about that. But Feel, oh, Feel, was, why are we fighting? I know. I just assumed Dan would turn into a vampire like he did when I mentioned I bought one of these. Well, not this one specifically, but an Elgato. Uh, Feels like I bought a dog turd with a name on it that this na this box also has on it. I'm like, yeah, but this, this seems all right if a little expensive, whereas you, you ate a dog turd sandwich. I don't know. Fucking... <laughs> Uh, I'm currently on the. I am on what was their best thing until this was announced in terms of external stuff. The HD 60s Plus. Yes. Which uh, is mainly for pass through stuff. So I can actually enjoy how games look while still recording at 1080. It's yeah. all right. And luckily, this adds, like, comparing it to that, it adds HDR pass through because yours doesn't have HDR, does it? I believe it does. I see HDR options in the interface and stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, th I think it's really neat. I just wonder who... It does have pass-through at the very least, because I was okay. able to play stuff in 4K HDR like uh, Resident Evil 2. I just wonder who needs this thing to record 4K HDR footage to an SD card for them when they have a PC where they could use much cheaper storage. Because if this thing recorded to, like, external drives via USB, which isn't a lot to ask, ask, there are devices that do that. Like, our camera does that. Various things made from uh, manufacturers in, like, the video industry do that. It could be recording to USB to a solid state drive. That that would that'd be perfect because those things are fast enough where that wouldn't bottleneck you. I'm just, I'm trying to imagine this exact customer. I'm trying to imagine that, and I can't wrap my head around it. We'll find him, Dan. The customer that's like, I gotta drop $400 right now so I can go to my FGC event to record my 4K footage of SF5. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, we'll see, it needs to be HDR, so it's gotta be Tekken, because I think Tekken has HDR. I'm gonna post yeah, this... They, they, they Here's need this. their Tekken sets. Here's this fucking image of them at a competitive game tournament using this capture card. They're fist pumping because they're winners. God, I'm <laughs> turning to stone just looking at it. <laughs> it's really funny in my opinion. <laughs> I, I feel like cool guy advertising their tech is infinitely worse than EA homunculus. <laughs> I think it would be fine if he weren't literally doing the I'm a cool kid fist pump. <laughs> I think that's the part of this yeah, that really just, makes it break down for me. <laughs> yeah, just said a slur in the voice chat. <laughs> yeah, fist pump. Fucking owned him, noobs. Uh, but yeah, I uh, I think this is an interesting device, definitely. I, I want to see more things go external to some extent just because... I ran out of PCI Express lanes. <laughs> I just yeah. don't want to open up mine and put in a thing. Yeah, that's true. It's scary. I, I guess that's a market of people who want to spend a hundred more dollars on a device and be limited in some ways. I guess it wouldn't limit you in that. No, it would limit you in some ways. But anyways, uh, just to not open their PC. I guess that's a thing. Yeah, there we go. We got it. We figured it out. Congratulations. Then maybe, maybe it's someone who's like, I got a high-end laptop. That's true. I mean, I could use this on our laptop. Ooh. And that the one be where me. you're waking up from the dream? <laughs> <laughs> what? <sighs> well, it's something Bob said one time. Oh, that somebody said uh, ray tracing on some laptop was like waking up from the dream. Oh my oh, god. Oh, yeah, yeah. There are so many small logical leaps that led to this meme, Casey. <laughs> Th they are. And I just I just remember like I was in a fugue state and, and then he just said that and I fucking was shook. Yeah, no, that it sure does have ray tracing, doesn't it? <laughs> and that sure is amazing, isn't it? And, and you know, I yeah. look back ray on Romano. the rest of gaming and I go, hey, why wasn't I ray tracing always? I might as well have been dead. <laughs> we have ray tracing at home. Ray tracing at home. 
the PS4 Pro's current ray tracing. So, KZ, you got some news? Uh, sure. Let me see what, uh... uh Alright, one of them that's, like, slightly related to, to Bob's thing. So, the lead designer on Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, who left Retro Studios, has uh, returned to the company, seemingly to work on something. This might be the Metroid Prime stuff. Maybe they're actually making another Donkey Kong game, because that remaster that they sold for a higher price than the original Wii U one will in fact uh in fact did pretty well for them so <laughs> there I mean, seems to be it seems crazy demand. that retro hasn't made anything this whole gen yeah the game that got me uh the game that got me blocked by the guy from game explain oh no uh but yeah maybe they're maybe they're working on that uh alongside the metroid prime stuff uh, what's interesting is the thing that this guy was working on before he came back <laughs> was Super Lucky's Tale. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, he was at that company. He worked on specifically the new version of it because they put out the original one uh, when Xbox One X launched and then they put out a revamped one. Yeah, which add cameras, features, and all mm -hmm. sorts of things like that. So... Uh, it I guess he did his best to try and fix that game. Yeah. But there's probably only so and much he can went, do. You know what? Maybe, maybe I could make games people know what they are. <laughs> what are you talking about? Lucky Tales is basically the new mascot for Xbox, right? Everybody thinks of Lucky when they think of Xbox. No. When I think uh, of Xbox, I think of Car. Oh, you're right. True. I don't think of anything, which might be even sadder. <laughs> I think of Master Chief was out ahead. Oh no, what what happened to his head? Well, he's been hauled out so they can live in him. <laughs> oh. Okay. Hey Bob, you know it would really be a weird direction to take uh the Halo universe in. What's that, Dan? Uh more of an Ender's game like universe? I don't know. I feel like that that sits way more comfortably with what Halo's one shoes three were. Hey, uh, I, I, I agree, but at the same time, when we start getting into weird science and it starts becoming Master Chief, we need to move inside and outside of the known universe uh -huh. in order to conjure into existence this thought you have. <laughs> I think that's when people go, okay, I'm, I'm done. That seems more reasonable than what happened in 4 and 5. Do you not like Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> <laughs> He was less explained than a DBZ movie villain. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> DBZ movie villains are, generally speaking, better explained than that fuck from 4. Because they put the explanations in the fucking books, and then, for some reason, thought every person who played that game was going to read the books, and now I'm done talking about it. Um, another thing, this happened to, uh, this happened today. Uh, so, WB Montreal, uh, these motherfuckers have continued their, what I've seen is... Five month long teasing of a Batman game. And have still shown nothing and announced nothing. They put out a shit or uh, get off the pot. A day after, I guess, the National Batman Day or something. They they posted a, a video like like a little video teasing techno looking thing. And then they teased again a week after. And it's supposed to be related to the Court of Owls. And uh, people were like, okay, maybe it's going to be that state of play, because at the time one of them was happening. No. Maybe it's the Game Awards a few months early. No. And now this has shown up today, which is just a police department symbol with claws on it. And I guess they have a, I guess they have a game, because they haven't put anything out since Arkham Origins, I, at which this came point, out a month before this gen launched. I have to just believe that they... They're going to announce it with the reveal of one of these new consoles, and it's going to be at launch. Like that's the only that thing I can believe be at this it. point. Yeah, yeah, it it has to be because otherwise, why, why are you teasing for five months like this? It, I feel like anything that's like that we know must exist, but they won't just say has to be for next gen. It's like you're the ones that made the Batman game that WB doesn't even care about. <laughs> I'm trying. They, they got somebody to play the Batman in that. Was it? Um. It's it's whoever voices Sonic. <laughs> oh, for some reason I was thinking that it was yeah, uh, Roger and, Craig Smith. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> also, Troy Baker was the Joker. Troy Baker mm -hmm. is the Joker in it. Okay, Troy Baker is not Batman in it. Got it. No, that's Telltale. 
they they have him doing uh oh my god yeah the this Troy is the Baker, best. Bruce Wayne in that he's pretty good at it man but, yeah. anybody voice anybody voice acting Batman has it fucking rough because Kevin Conroy is a fucking walking god <laughs> <laughs> yes I don't want to get into how cool Kevin Conroy is but did you know he served food to firefighters and police right after 9-11 he went out and was a first responder they put him in the new CW thing as a Batman like a live action thing what good he kind of looks like Batman yeah Kevin Conroy was in the crisis on infinite earths but from the CW thing <laughs> like I will yeah I know because <laughs> you know CW special effects and fights look really good they have a channel awesome energy to them they really do yeah he, he apparently is some sort of old Batman in that and he was in one of the episodes that's all that's all I know about that but I was like that's neat so I was like what are they doing like a Batman Beyond thing or something it's pretty cool oh, mm-hmm. pretty cool uh, last thing I have is um, it, was, uh, it was announced by Platinum that they are getting uh, capital investments from Tencent, the giant Chinese soul vacuum. Uh, the, the way it was just desc- I was seeing it was described as just Tencent put money in with the expectation that they will eventually hopefully get the money back. Yeah, the there's profits. no uh, there's they, they don't it wasn't stock. They don't own any of Platinum. It, yeah. It's literally just give us money and hopefully we get a return. Platinum said we're going to use this money to self-publish. Yeah, self-publishing. I I don't know if I don't know if Platinum, I don't know if Tencent was like we have to diversify. Mm. Cuz this it seems so weird to, to for them to invest in Platinum cuz they own Riot. They own half of Epic. They own like 10% of Ubisoft. Ah, uh, yeah, because so, they helped they helped uh, rescue them from Vivendi. So, like, it's just strange unless unless they saw something that just blew their ass off. It show show me like that weird... butt again. Uh, this is our game, Nier Automata. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they seem like some weird tentacle monster that just wants as many tendrils into as many companies as possible. And uh, my my understanding is that um. The big Chinese publishers are branching out a lot because they're constantly afraid that the like the Chinese government will just go, "You get to die." Well, there was so that they have- story one or two years ago where China just said no video games, and they wouldn't give like the the go ahead for ten cent to do anything. So they kind of just sat bl- bleeding money for like three months. Yes, yeah, so they wanna they wanna they wanna have a safety net of non. Japanese shit. Because I know they, they're they the ones that d- distribute the Switch in China. Yes. It is the Nintendo Tencent Switch. <laughs> <laughs> it does not play other Good. region games, just so you know. Uh, yes, as, as, as they explained, uh, Joy-Con drift is caused by playing games from that have been imported. <laughs> <laughs> that is... The- Good old Chinese propaganda. That's that shit literally made me laugh my ass off. It's what very if they're good. right? <laughs> what if they're right? Oh no! <laughs> Are you telling me I need to import my games from Tencent? And yes. Like, oh no! <laughs> I think we fig- you cracked the fucking code l- right here. Oh, I got I got my jet my Chinese version of Overwatch on Switch. Where, where's May? Oh. <sighs> hey Bob, what's up? I'm really excited about this Persona Five Scramble thing. Okay, uh, talk to me about it. A little I was bit. the first sure. person to be excited about it. I recall when they unveiled that and Royal at the same time, and I was like, "Yes, yeah, Scramble, that's the exciting news." And everyone's like, "Dan, you're fucking stupid." And then today, everyone's like, "Holy shit, this looks hype." Here, here's how this, here's how this works. I went. Oh, it's a oh, it's a Musa thing. Because the hope was like, oh, maybe it's some some weird anything that isn't a Muso. And what then it went, oh, harder. this is the most this is the most we're trying so hard. So yeah, we got a new trailer for it. Mm-hmm. They show off motorcycle gameplay. Yeah, snowboarding gameplay. Yeah, they do. 
uh, Demon Fusion from uh, the regular style games. Yes! Which, uh, I, they might have shown this in an early trailer, but I'm not sure. I just showed it in here because I was like, ah, that's cool. I'm glad to see that. Mm -hmm. um, and they also did a logo animation <laughs> at the end of the trailer where a 2 shows up in front of Persona 5 and then it gets knocked away by the S for Scramble. Yes. And this is this is also very directly a sequel to the game. So it, it's really neat. It, it definitely feels like more of that universe. So I'm I'm excited. Yeah, when I watched when I watched that trailer, I just started laughing real bad because they had said up front, "This is a sequel to Persona 5. and I was like, "Oh, that's neat." And then this trailer happens with so much variety and gameplay to where it doesn't even look like a Musou game at all because there's so many extra features and it's exploding with style. And that logo a two appears and it just gets ruined. It starts falling into the abyss, and I'm like, "That's perfect." I feel bad for that, too. Okay, Omega Force is working on this. I was curious if they were... Oh, yeah. If yeah, no, it's only still, Atlas it's, was making this, or if it... It's or definitely if it was, still... Had, like, think it Atlas could make a fucking Musou game from the ground up that doesn't Worst, look like burning you, garbage. You think Atlas yeah. could make yeah. a game? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I would... I think there's a timeline where they, Omega Force isn't working on this. Everything looks real cool. Then you buy it and touch it and go, oh. But, but I mean, everything we saw from the combat side looks like just a Musou game straight right. up. It has a, the, some of those other things that are happening that are totally different. But mm -hmm. yeah, when the, when it's fighting a horde of dudes, you do see a tree hit combo and then he finishes it with a cool move. Yeah, mm -hmm. Musou game. Yeah, it's a Musou game. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It, it's like being a Souls-like, but it's way better. <laughs> Is it like being a Souls-like? In that being a Musou game it has been understood what it means mechanically for oh, like how okay. you engage with it, yes. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 It's a pretty known set of explored rules. It's, it's so fucked up that Dynasty Warriors sucks and all and all of their licensed things look so rad. Dynasty Warriors sucks now. <laughs> now, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah that, that's what I mean. Cause, now. Thank cause you for adding that. People were gonna eight, yell. Yeah, because eight was eight. It was all right, and nine is just a fucking tire fire. Open world. I mean, they started to like redeem themselves. I feel like was Orochi when they did the new one of those. Like, okay, they get it. They're making a good game and using those characters. Yes, but that's not Dynasty Warriors. That's a side series. <laughs> I know it's a side series, but it has Dynasty Warriors characters in it, so it's closer to the main series than say persona or hyrule warriors yeah yeah that's fair either way i i've enjoyed every spinoff i think for uh for the musou stuff except for the north star one i think that was the one where i was like mm, yeah not, that not. one was really early in the i've doing never it. It was heard rough. anything yeah. good about those yeah that one was that one was rough i played the all the first one all the way through it was yeah. kind of rough i played the second one and it seemed to be worse <laughs> i got to the first stage and didn't play anymore oh god yeah, uh, but uh, I think, yeah, I'm very excited for this. Like when you look at Hyrule Warriors and how nice that is, and then like I know some people enjoyed Fire Emblem Heroes. Like, no, it's Fire Emblem Warriors. Warriors Heroes is the mobile game. Yeah, Heroes the fucking mobile game. Oh yeah, no, that comes with the turf. Uh, it what's that? It's a Musou game. The ground texture will be a Windows icon. Luckily, with Persona, <laughs> they have the excuse of it's stylized. The ground texture is a single color. It's pure black. How convenient. Yeah. <laughs> Better than a uh, Telltale Batman where they use like a Shutterstock uh, photo of someone dying and it was a real politician who died. <laughs> oh. Wow. That, that was like a, that was a thing. It was, I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to find it, but that was. <laughs> hey, Bob. I don't want to know any more about that. That's I'm going to, I'm going to distract from that, Bob. I'm going to need you to take uh, you and our two other co-hosts to take a bet on this right now. Okay. Uh, oh, no. Looking at this Chasm's live stream from August 2018, Eric says, <sighs> after saying it was mid and not bad, he says, I almost platinumed this game. Bob, do you think Eric has that platinum by now? Um, mm, I know he's gone back recently. It's got platinums he missed, but I don't think he went back to this one. I'm not going to guess he didn't. KZ. I agree. Mr. Feel. Uh, no, he doesn't have the platinum because he wasn't as close as he thought he was. <laughs> okay. So, 
Uh, you gave me enough time to find the information on this. Telltale's Batman uses photo of assassinated Russian ambassador. Oh yeah, Aww. yeah, I remember that. And then they was- and then they had to remove. It's like in the Bat Cave. They they load up files and they use that photo because apparently the dude was put on one of those photo sites where you buy where you buy assets. Weird. Okay. And somehow someone used this and thought, this won't cause any problems. Yeah. It'll be fine. But I got other news articles here. Yeah, let's keep rolling. Um, Arxis announced a new game. It's like a small game. It's called Code Shifter. Uh It has a hundred playable characters that are all like pixelized versions of their other franchises. It's got Guilty Gear, Blaze Blue, and River City stuff. Yeah, uh, Kyoko and... uh... Isako are also in this. They were in one of the screenshots. Yeah, they, they got the new ones, and they also have the older River City characters as well. Like they showed a Bobo, stuff like that. Um, and for some reason, the all the crossover characters are weird pixel art, and the main character that you play is that can transform into these pixel art characters. Looks like she's from Kim Possible. See, it's I will, um Aaron Insurance. Yes, which is yeah, not Kim Possible. Possible. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, yeah, it's very strange. Yeah. It's also got a brawl mode where you can do like four player competitive matches against each other with all these characters. So, this game's probably going to be really bad. But it's I, probably going to be really this. bad, but at a concept level, I like it. Right. Yeah, that's what I was, I looked at this. I looked at the, the character sprites. Then I saw 100 playable characters. My brain immediately went to Mighty Gunvolt. Uh, yeah, it did give me a Mighty Gunvolt burst energy. Right, but has ambition at all. Mighty Gunvolt Burst had the ambition to hand you a bunch of uh, tools to ruin their game. Yes. Yeah. Or, or as uh, I like to say, make their game brave. at all interesting. So that's coming remember, sometime. I... Ladies and gentlemen, Eric got the platinum. Of course he did. I should uh... I should always guess for or bet on him. Eric, video games. I apo- I apologize for even suggesting that you weren't a, a brave enough man to get the platinum. He has eight Platinums. One of them is Chasm. That is powerful. <laughs> wow, that's seven more than I have. Oh, you only have one Platinum? What's it in? Uh, Atelier Riza. Oh. Jesus, so it's brand new. Fancy. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I have any more than two. I, I know I got Bayonetta. I've got um, Tekken 6. And I think I did the one for Devil May Cry 3. So I guess that'd be three. Uh, Eric. There's got, always just like one thing where it's like, I don't want to do that. Bye, and then I leave. Eric's got Bloodborne, Indivisible Control, uh, Spyro's a Dragon, Blood- Spyro's Blood- Two, Ripto's Rage, Chasm. Yeah, who's tweeting about Dark- just getting the Bloodborne one like Dark today Souls or something? Three. Uh. Yeah, and Ease Memory of Salsetta on the Vita. <laughs> wow, <laughs> didn't expect that reaction. Yeah, I've mean, got that really game into that. Okay, but I can't imagine playing it that long. I've done many things for trophies. Mm-hmm. In the, the, I feel like the biggest news article this whole week. Okay. Uh, Capcom producer Matt Walker goes to Twitter. It's got a, a video to talk Ooh. about the Devil May Cry three release for Switch. Mm. He's really vague. Mm. He says they're they're adding new stuff. No, don't get any. Too too hype though. It's just small things. They're just small ads. Okay. Um, he mentions being motivated, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he gives out three dates. And apparently, later on, they said that each of those dates is going to be an announcement of a new feature. So uh, the sixteenth of this month, the thirtieth of this month, and then the thirteenth of February, we're going to have three new features announced. Now, one of them, uh, people are already guessing from the way the website words stuff, and they have seen screenshots where you get to see um, styles actually listed on the, like, gameplay. While you're playing Rainbow of Your Health Bar, you can see, like, oh, you're in Royal Guard mode or your Sword Master mode. People are thinking they're adding style switching, which would be really cool. Like, on-the-fly style switch is something mods put in long ago. Yeah. And that'd be great to see actually officially put in. But that's still, there's two, still two other features we don't know. Maybe they'll add uh, Virgil's motivation gauge from uh, 4 Special Edition, where you get stronger by slowly walking around enemies. <laughs> I mean, that would imply them adding new moves to Virgil, which would be great. I'd love to see that, because um, he does not quite this feel complete. This is the complete. big Virgil stuff everyone's been waiting for, right? 
<laughs> yeah, definitely. This is it. Mm hmm. Um, <laughs> something about a devil may cry odd numbered title getting some virtual stuff. Yes, that's what everyone's excited for. But uh, we could also, I, I'm hoping for being able to change your weapons anywhere because that's a very really minor feature that they could definitely implement. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. I forgot that you can't do that. Yeah. No, it's, it's kind of dumb. Um, but yeah, then who knows what that third one would be. Maybe it is something virtual related. Maybe they're adding a new cutscene for Virgil. I don't know. That'd be insane. I feel like doing anything visual, like any new moves or any new cutscenes for a game this old just isn't going to happen. Could you fucking imagine they make a modern quality mocap fucking cutscene and drop it into that game so it just looks <laughs> so be much so better? so funny. <laughs> they bring I mean back the staff for it too. <laughs> And then you can switch to the <laughs> animatic version. <laughs> it's just the poorest financial decision in history, and they just <laughs> added V. <laughs> oh my god. Who not, PS2 me? quality V. I would buy this fucking version in a heartbeat if they added V. Maybe they're going to put in a, a cutscene trailer for uh, Virgil and Smash. Yep, but you got to platinum the game. <laughs> you got to get every in-game achievement. I mean, I'd do it anyway, but still. Yeah, you, you would do it anyway. Uh, I I could listen to Matt Walker talk about anything. Because <laughs> just hear, hearing him do the pitch of, I just like, you know, the switch where I can take things on the go. And he snapped his fingers, and I'm like, God, you're so good at this. I can't believe he got a start on Oper Operation Raccoon City. Look, Capcom was in dire times. <laughs> Yeah, he was talking when I listened to that interview of him talking. He's like, that was my first game. And he was very nice in talking around that game being bad. <laughs> and Capcom, we like to try new things. He almost said the theme is bravery. <laughs> At Capcom, we like to uh, give you the ability to play a faceless soldier shooting Leon in the face 15 times. Ooh. Yeah. Sometimes you need that. Uh, so to transition us to more important news, I have something I want to talk about. There's nothing more important. What, what is it, Dan? <laughs> Oh, do you do you have more to talk about? No, with I don't Cafe? have any. Oh, about okay. What was this? You, you sure? Yeah. I'm trying to derail you. Oh, okay. Uh, I I don't know. People can decide whether or not it's more important. Uh, here are my list of platinums. Okay. <laughs> Mighty number no. nine twice. Hey, look. <laughs> of course, because this is a PS4 and PS3 version. A uh, little big planet. Rock Band 2, and this one is why I said feel I've done a lot of things for trophies. Feel, to have a platinum in Rock Band 2, you have to play every song in the game non-stop without pausing and beat it on expert. Oh, it, it takes like four and a half or five and a half hours. It's a really long thing to do. Uh, that just sounds unpleasant. <laughs> yeah, it's a platinum trophy feel. It's not pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I have five platinums. I'm seeing now. I'm trying real, to figure out what real quick. What let they me are. shotgun through the rest Go of this list. It. That was the only one I needed to stop and elaborate on. Uh, Rogue Legacy, uh, which is across all versions. Pixel Junk Shooter Ultimate, which is a great game. Everyone should check that out. Blaze Blue, which is a great game. People should check that out. Rezogun, the PS3 and Vita version, is a separate platinum. So you'll see that later on PS4. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Uh, I'm just going to say this even if I don't mean it because I know it upsets people. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 was the last good Call of Duty. <laughs> Every Call of Duty since has been the most disappointing thing since my son. Uh, we also oh, got no. Infamous, Indivisible, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, Infamous First Light, Infamous Second Son, no Infamous 2. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, Lego Rock Band. Wait, no, I don't have the Platinum. There's one trophy I don't have in that. Disregard. And sound how, do you, how do you view platinum specifically in this? It's thing? really difficult. I'll I'll copy pasta thing. I'll send you a uh, anyway. Okay. Uh, and I have three platinums for the game sound shapes <laughs> <laughs> because for whatever reason Sony Sony gave their own game a distinct platinum <laughs> per platform, <laughs> but gives you every version when you buy it once. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Those dumbasses. <laughs> It was a good idea. Uh, sure. Yeah, it sure was. <laughs> I'm going through my list of games and seeing, or remembering that I bought the, uh, Warriors All Stars a while back because I was like, yeah, once the PS5 comes out, that game will run right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's happening a lot now. Holy shit! I'm actually looking at 
my hardest trophies I don't have quite platinumed. Bunny Must Die, Chelsea and the Seven Devils on uh, PS4 and Vita. Uh, Death Stranding, because of course. And Destiny on PS4, because it requires some fucky shit from you. Which actually, it's requiring you to get from other people. Like, hey, do a raid and no one dies. Good uh, fucking luck. Uh, no. Yeah. Never. Not, not even once. Not even once. Uh, so here's the site I'm using if you guys would like to look at it and ruminate. Oh my god. I, mm. I found one more that I did. I did Odin Sphere. The, the of course, PS4 version. Yeah. A vastly uh -huh. better version. And I'm sitting at 80% on Devil May Cry 1 for oh. PS3. Oh. 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 We need to start doing Platinum Trophy streams, Bob, for the Devil May Cry 1 on the PS3. No, we really don't need to do that. You're right. We we already have that other uh, Bob draws things for you stream plan. So <laughs> no. I'm so excited. Oh, 21 no. hours. <laughs> 21 hours. Bob, uh. if we do it for 21 hours, we're retiring. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. All right. How do I find myself on this website? Uh, you got to type in your name in the search bar. Well, there was a search bar on the homepage. I see once you're in a profile, it kind of throws that away. <laughs> What a well-designed site. Yeah, it's great. I was like, one moment I'm trying to use this keyboard, but this bowl of Cheerios is in the way. <laughs> I can talk about minor things while Bob's doing Fantastic. that. Fantastic. Let's talk about minor things. So, an AI determined that Devil May Cry 5 Dante is the most attractive man in video games. <laughs> uh, it's one of those mm. facial recognition AIs where it'll scan your face and use various metrics that, you know, are a black box. Mm-hmm. To determine how obje objectively uh -huh. how attractive you are and dante won out of all video game characters that, that they scanned mm. i wonder how many uh, they scanned a lot they had like there was they made like a top 100 i think uh dmc4 nero was five i think number four i think number four was uh gogeta from fighters um, what? He's very handsome. Yeah. <laughs> mm. AIs, man. AIs. Oh, I got the Indivisible Platinum as well. I forgot that I did that, because it, it's pretty easy in that game, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I managed I mean, to find my I managed to find my Platinum list in here. Oh, okay. Alright, so, Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, 3, mm -hmm, and Dream Drop mm -hmm. Distance. Mm -hmm. Um, 0 0.2 technically, but they didn't put a plat on that. Oh. Um, infamous second son, which was my first platinum ever. Oh wow! Infamous uh, one was my first platinum ever. Oh look at that! Fun games to platinum. It's the only infamous I've ever played is uh, Second Son. Yeah, that 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 seems on brand. Yeah, I I got into the PS3 gen way too late. Yeah. Uh, and then then I've got uh the Outer Worlds and. Spider-Man PS4. And that seems to be all the all the plats I've obtained. KZ, I, I have not played Spider-Man PS4. Should I do that this year? Yes, it is. On PS5. Is. <laughs> this, you'll have so much time in November. <laughs> yeah, I'll have so much time that I'll do a death stream to play the game to a platinum nonstop. <laughs> also, I like, how they, I like how they showed the loading in that. That game doesn't load very often. Yeah, no, they 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 talk about how they did a lot of data duplication to prevent the game from mm -hmm. having to load very long. And they're like, next gen, we won't have to have 21 versions of Spider-Man on the game data. <laughs> yeah, you, sp you spend a lot of time just playing the game. Like, there's if you're doing stuff like, I want to hit up all of Harry Osborn's techno puzzle things in the area... And then sometimes they have to change the world to night because there's not like a real day and night cycle in that game. It's all dependent on uh, the story. Yeah, it's all scripted. Yeah. 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 It's like scripted day and night. But it's, but yeah, highly recommend it. It's my favorite Spider-Man game at this point. Probably one of my favorite uh, stories for a Spider-Man thing. It's a really great story. The, the only bad thing about the Platinum is eventually you reach the point of complete every uh, every petty crime that's happening so sometimes you have to swing in a specific zone to have like the apb come off for it mm -hmm. 
but sometimes if you're not paying attention, you've swung into a different district and then it's spawning it for that one. It, it could have been better. You know, I, I wish there was like a button to unnaturally spawn crimes. <laughs> <laughs> the crime button. Uh, the moment, the moment I knew, the moment I knew this game was fantastic and I desperately wanted a sequel is when Norman Osborn finally shows up and he looks as close, as close to the Spider-Man 1 movie as they could possibly make him look and not get sued. He's a little chunky. Uh, before we move on, I'm going to read the top 10 list that this AI said for video game men. Oh no. Number Ooh. 10 is, uh. Tarek from League of Legends. <laughs> oh my god! That dude has been the butt of jokes at Gigaboots for years. Well, what? he's the tenth. He's the tenth most attractive man in video games. Sounds uh, like you're jealous. Number uh, nine diamonds. is uh, oh, Keanu <laughs> Reeves from Cyberpunk. <laughs> That's kind of cheating, but the okay. The of the West. Uh, number eight is Kazuma Kiryu from Yakuza Zero. <laughs> A lot, a lot Very of detailed face. Yeah. Uh, number seven is is time skip Claude from Fire Emblem Three Houses. <laughs> God. Number six is Nero from Devil May Cry Four. Number five is Squall from Dissidia. <laughs> number four is Johnny Cage from Mortal Kombat Eleven. <laughs> number okay. three is Go is Gogeta from Fighters. Number two is Sephiroth from Dissidia. <laughs> and number one is Dante. What is this list? <laughs> uh, I can link you the video. You know, it's not the dumbest list Bob and I have experienced recently. Hey, Bob, remember how birthday cake flavored things were invented by Oreo in 2012? Yeah, that we makes don't a have lot of time sense. for this. No one fucking had birthday cake flavored shit before that. It's definitely not a common ice cream flavor. Nope. Talk about literally anything else. Uh -huh. Okay, let's talk about Final Fantasy 15. Oh! Sure. Or go shoot it. Final Fantasy 15 is getting a mobile MMO, which, uh, Apparently, we'll have an alternate story from the main game. If feel, I, I get, if I didn't trust feel to not just blatantly lie on a fucking podcast, I would assume he was making all of this up. I mean, That's I fucking look, insane. One thing he hasn't gotten to yet: it's for China. I don't know if we'll ever see this go outside of China. Yeah, it, it's it's not being developed by Square Enix. It's being developed by some other company. I, it's apparently using Unreal Four. Oh, what? Oh my Why? god. Why wouldn't you? There what are what, plans for what a, what a sad, sad it's existence. Set. When it's like, this is Square Enix's test bed where we'll make every fucking thing we want to test out just on this corpse. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I uh, remember this being announced like a while back because because they're really slow about this. Like, I think China's also the place that was trying to make Final Fantasy Eleven, but it's a mobile single player title. And Final Fantasy Type Zero Online. So they've been doing a lot of weird stuff over there. With well, this will get a global release. They said there's plans for a global release. <gasps> oh, well, the good. story almost has to be better than the original Final Fantasy 15. I mean, it's probably just going to be. Does I it? I mean, I I would assume that this is going to be the weird alternate timeline they were setting up with the canceled DLCs. Then it's going to be worse than the story of the main game. Hey, Bob. Hey, Dan. Hey, Bob. What's up? What if, and hear me out, this had a middling to good villain? Right? That's one, <laughs> one thing. Any one thing could make it better, because every single individual thing in 15 is bad. <laughs> 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 Uh, uh, my counterpoint that um, cup noodle quest is really good. Yeah, but it has nothing to do with the story. The main villain of of the game wasn't cup noodles. It should have been. It's okay. With every new DLC and patch, they were trying to find out new motivations for their villain. <laughs> <laughs> what a great villain! Yeah, really glad they're in this city. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> did we talk about that last week? Yes, oh, of course we, did. we talked we, about we that did. last week. 
during the 50 minute uh, corpse nightmare that was 4 a.m. being big thing. I think that yeah. was hilarious because we had two weeks of gaming news to talk about. It was still only 50 minutes. <laughs> yep. Now, uh, so Street Fighter V has had a bug that existed since day one. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a bug where if like the clock of the game for two players online is not perfectly matched. One player will experience weird rollback and the other won't. This has existed <sighs> since day one. Uh, somebody finally got fucking sick of it, at least on PC and was like, I'm going to sit down and fix it. I fixed it in two days. Most of that was me reverse engineering their shit. If I had had the code, it would have taken me 30 minutes. Fix your shit. Quote cap clown. Yeah. <sighs> Street Fighter V, ladies uh, and gentlemen. Now it's time for the giant Gigantamax impadimp in the room. I. We put out a podcast <laughs> less than 24 hours ago in which the winner of Thing We Don't Want to Show Up on Big Think Dimension was Pokemon Man. <laughs> And a Pokemon Direct got announced for the exact same day we scheduled to release part one of that podcast extravaganza, and he's fucking in it! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I had to pause, like, I turned it on, I had to pause it to put it on the TV, and it was just like, is it really just gonna start with him at a desk looking at me? No, I that wasn't him. With that. Yeah, Junichi Masuda was, was in the two later. shot. Oh. Whereas, yeah, where they had the director of Pokemon Swish, and he he's the producer of Pokemon Swish, and then they announced... Uh, someone else is directing the DLC. Here's that man. Yes. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, feel free to talk about this news. I have to go use the restroom. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, okay. So His we got the, out. I, I made sure to take down some notes on this. <laughs> Maybe we should just start with Pokemon the, uh, Sword. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes more sense. We got stuff. other news aside from it. Like, uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. A lot of people were happy about this. Yeah, there's a demo. You can carry it over to the main game once it's out. It does just uh, seem I'm, weird like to not make a new mystery dungeon and just be like, uh, we'll remake the first one. This is a test. Yeah. It's a test. It doesn't need a test. It's proven. No, <laughs> it only everything needs a test, Bob. That's insane. The only one that didn't sell well was the one they released at the launch of the 3DS or near the launch when it was still doing terribly. I, I looked up sales figures on it, and at best, like during its prime, it was selling like three to four million. And the two separate releases they did for 3DS stuff in like 2013 and 2015 were like one million something. So maybe they think uh, the series is Dragon, and this is their let's get a pop, let's remake the first one. I feel bad for the, the fans of this series. It's just coming out to get killed. It is coming out in June and March, March. I can't believe 6th. that. March yeah. 6th. Just coming out within Buster Sword range. I mean, at least it's on the Switch, so it's a separate market technically, but not really. Uh, it'll... Yeah, but isn't Animal Crossing coming out like a week after this? Yeah, Animal Crossing uh, comes out the a week and a month. half it's later. Like, it's like the 22nd, uh, I think. I think it's the 20th. So, so... two and a half weeks. That's yeah, 14 two and a half days. weeks. When uh, Isabel will rip and tear the demons. Um, yeah, wait, March twentieth. So four. Did you guys talk about the spinoff instead of it, instead of the yeah. DLC? Yeah, we. we I was trying to skip yeah. yeah. the DLC shit. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, we were just gonna knock out the small. Yeah, one I first. assumed that that's what you were gonna do, but Bob had ideas. Son of a bitch. Yeah, it wasn't even me or KZ betraying you. This time it was Bob. Look, I right? just wanted to get rid of the little one first. Cause this, look at all this, look at all this stuff is written down for the DLC. It's like an hour. Yeah, I, I know that someone gave uh, the Pokemon company a direct input to the big thick notes. I'm just shotgunning a PR in here. That's, uh, yeah, I, I'm I, looking I, at I just thought I'd write down the news. Uh, Dan, who never writes news, has to criticize my news taking. No, that's cool. I'm not criticizing the news taking. It's when these notes are read verbatim I have more of a thing with. Hmm. But uh, so what are the, what are the takes on this mystery dungeon rescue team DX? I'm I'm happy the people who like that game are getting it again. I'm terribly afraid its launch window will kill it. Uh, 
I, I said this on Twitter, but I'll say it more elaborately here because, you know, Twitter's a great place to ex- express yourself. Good for um, nuance. Oh, yeah. It's, a, it's the home for nuance on the internet. <laughs> Make sure to use that statement feature they're bringing out there. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, I wish this wasn't a remake of an older spinoff because ultimately I'm going to play through that spinoff and I would like to have something else to play. Um, if this was a new thing or a sequel to an older thing, it would be a a different game I could play on top of that. But I, I feel like it being a remake sort of removes that from, you know, things I could be interested in. Uh, that That's why I'm a little bummed out that what they announced was a remake of a really old spinoff. Um, I understand people love that game. I'm not saying it's a bad game. Uh, but that's how people took that on Twitter for some reason. Uh, but you yeah, made the no. statement of it sucks that the spinoffs can't be new spinoffs. It has to be remakes of spinoffs you already play, and people go, "It's good, so it's fine." I like these. Yeah, uh, like yeah, but wouldn't you like a new mystery dungeon? No, these people who keep asking for Pokemon Snap games can't imagine where this is a new Snap game instead of this. Like instead of funding going towards a remake of an old spinoff. They can't imagine I sealed a my new heart away spin-off. when it comes to Pokemon Snap. I just like this literally after, could have after been after they didn't take the slam dunk that is Wii U tablet camera. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's dead. There's no hope for these people. Yeah, I I get that, and I'm not saying I'm disappointed because I was hoping for Pokemon Snap. I'm not sitting here watching yeah. the Pokemon Direct, being like, "Where's Snap? you were hoping for Pokemon Pinball." Sword and shield. That would have been. I mean, that would have been Pokemon really good. Pinball would have been neat. Um, they could God, do that'd a new be so one of those. good with like Gigantamax boss Pokemon. Also, this is a remake launching at the time it is, and it's a full sixty dollars. Yeah, it's pretty. That seems crazy. <sighs> that seems rough, but <laughs> that's the Nintendo and Pokemon way. Yeah. Uh, and then of course they they announced oh. that. Pokemon Homes coming out next month. We'll have more to talk about on in the next month. And I'm like, what? <laughs> we still don't know what it is. <laughs> it's, it's a month what? away. We haven't figured it out yet. It's one month. I, I already Mother wrote fuck. it down. Pokemon Prison. You go in there. You go into Pokemon Home. You you put in your Chimchar. You come back. He's banging a cup against the bars. He looks real sad. Please don't target my Chimchar like this. I was arrested for knowing Thunder Punch. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that this Pokemon Direct even exists kind of threw me off because I felt like the very next thing at any point would be a Nintendo Direct. Right. Like we're so we're so close and there's a lot of unknowns for this year aside from Animal Crossing. And we got the most boring one they could have given us. I well not only that, you look at Pokemon Swish and you kind of go, "Okay, now it's time for the Pokemon company to double down and and you know, make make a a really strong title for the Switch or have some exciting revelations for us for maybe the middle of this year, later this year, they're like, we have a remake coming out in March. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like that, that kind of side, I was, I was side, uh, yeah, I was I, blindsided. I, was, I forgot that it even came out or they announced a release date. I it was like, that seemed insane. I, I was just in shock more than anything. Um, I do like when that happens where a thing exists and then it's, it's we have a date less than two months yeah i would like that if out. it weren't march <laughs> yeah if it yeah, wasn't I, yeah, the dead zone <laughs> if it wasn't the dead zone yes yeah i did think it was neat like visually that game up uh, from what people were posting is supposed to kind of look like the art they made for the game like they're trying to make it look more accurate to that which i think is neat uh, i have no interest in the mystery dungeon games i haven't played a single one and uh, it's also coming out in a dead zone so i Probably yeah, I would. Won't play I would love to try this if it wasn't coming out in the middle of the apocalypse. <laughs> I <laughs> too many. I have I, to start saving now. I have passed on playing this game for sixteen years. The thought that I'm going to do it now during March for sixty dollars, yeah, that's is kind of nuts. Um, I, I, it is on my to do list. Like I'm gonna play through this game at some point. It looks, it looks fun. I don't... What if it runs bad? I don't know that I need it to be Shut 3D. Up. I don't know that I need it to look amazing. I feel like the original game was serviceable enough from everything I've seen and heard and read. 
I I just that's the part that gets me. I would have liked a new spinoff. Yeah. But oh well. I, I, that's I got the views happen all the time. Oh yeah, there is a demo coming out. It's already out. Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm gonna try that. I saw. I saw talk about it next week. It. Yeah, I'll I'll try it and we can talk about it next week. Um, yeah, maybe I maybe I will too. So I've I've got this here. I won't read it verbatim, but we have Pokemon Sword and Shield news, which I didn't expect this. To be honest, where they're I, doing it. Ex- they're I doing it ex- like. Go ahead, Kate. <laughs> no, go. You've won this fight. <laughs> Name. Okay. <laughs> uh, like I expected, I expected something like the next big thing because we found out about Sword and Shield at the beginning of February last year. So this was be a little bit earlier, but I couldn't imagine them doing another one. I was expecting a lot of things not related to this, aside from we've put out a free update and moved the raid stuff. But they uh, announced the expansion pass. Because I guess they're afraid of calling them season passes. Uh, yes. I, I put on Twitter my um, worst case scenario expectations before this came out. I, I loved your worst case scenario. What was your worst Please case scenario? Us. 15 minutes of Pokemon Home. Five minute reveals for trailer of Inteleon in uh, Smash Bros. <laughs> that would have been raw. It, it would have been, been the worst so thing good. ever. <laughs> the worst Inteleon is so match-o. raw, dude. Uh... I can't talk about certain Inteleon related things. Inteleon is re- one of the worst Pokemon ever. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Bob! Okay. Inteleon is okay. fantastic. He he is worse than Gax. He is like Gax, but it's worse. <laughs> <laughs> I've got so fuck, great. Fuck you, Bob. I'll <laughs> shit in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon Sword and Shield has an expansion pass. It's 30 bucks. Some of the details around this. They put up a little thing saying, in the past, we used to sell you a full game where we changed up the story and stuff, and we, learned, we don't want to do that anymore. We realized so you wouldn't this. buy it for $60. <laughs> Maybe yeah, they're like, they're like, there's no way this shit's going to work this time. Uh, so they're just doing uh, season pass content that's split into two parts. Uh, but all- <laughs> I don't know how it works, because they said it's, you get the shield version expansion pass. And I'm like, oh, shit. Is that how this works now? Do you buy two season passes if you own both games? Yeah. Oh, I did that. That better you, not be. The oh, you didn't see that. That's how it, that's, that's it, how it, it works. It's all the, it's up on the store now. You can do that. Yeah, you. That's yep, what it is. If you're dumb. a person who owns sword and shield and you want to play through that content on both versions, you have to buy that expansion pass twice. Of yeah, course. They're going to be so they've done. They've, they've split this into two things. First one's coming out in June. The other one, uh, Fall. The Isle of Armor, followed by the Crown Tundra. These are like big uh, land masses with their own story that takes place after the main game. So you don't it's have your to like, start a new game. Yeah. It's like the first, uh, the first post-game Pokemon has gotten in over a decade. And they're adding it in. Um, $30. Exclusives. Uh, like like ri- the rivals are different. Uh, yeah. They had a to lot patch of in a rival because there wasn't one in the original game. <laughs> yes, there <laughs> were. There was like five. You just pretend they don't exist. Look, Bob, they don't they, exist basically look, Bob, in the story. They, they they paid attention <laughs> to people on the internet. They they listened to what they knew was true in their hearts, and they're like, "Yeah, Hop won't be joining you for these areas." <laughs> I really hope you I don't have to fight that. Hop even one more time. <laughs> Yeah, imagine <laughs> she's gonna show up eight times in each area. Oh, it's just gonna start playing its theme. It's gonna be like, and he's like, "Hey, guys, running, no, you're running, like, hey, guys, you're running, like, no. <laughs> you're running from him in the new wild area, like running from a Pokemon." <laughs> They're like, "With your new upgraded rocket-powered bike, and you just ram it into a brick wall and kill yourself to get away from Hop." <laughs> <laughs> They did actually, they talked about in these expansions, hmm. they are adding customization for bikes, which I thought was interesting. Yes. Just let me wear my regular clothes on the bike. No, you must look like an idiot if you bike. Safety first. Let me. Safety first. (laughs) At least let me customize my bike clothes. Nope, I'm sorry. You're some sort of dumb idiot who wears dumb idiot biking clothes when you bike. (laughs) They will do that. They will do that. Boys get four options. Girls get 37. (laughs) Boys get two options. Boys get two options. It's browns and beige. 
<laughs> Rounds and face. Customization stuff is really good because they show stuff like you can dress like Getsis for some reason because that is yeah. Scouter yeah. as an option. They did that, yeah. You can just be you Marnie dress, if you, you want. Can just, Neat. You can just be Chairman Rose. I don't know why you'd want to be that. Yeah, that could confuse <laughs> me. I was like, yeah, I guess. I don't know. They played aloof about who would be commanding you in the second DLC. I'm assuming it's just going to be him, but maybe I'm maybe I'm crazy. He escapes prison in order to help you through the crown. Did crown he even tundra. go to prison? I remember yes. somebody yes. was like, they did it in Don't text. worry. The next scene, they go, so Chairman Rose turned himself in. <laughs> Well, yeah, but that he just turned himself in. He's rich. He's they're probably they'll probably just be like, do some community service. Oh my god, I will hate you if your gamer premonition that he's doing community service <gasps> in this DLC is correct. <laughs> you know me and feel are right on this. <laughs> so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I know you're right. That's that's why I'm upset. That's awful, <laughs> and we need to stop. So we're gonna talk about uh, with the new DLC areas. You're gonna get over 200 new old Pokemon. Those new old Pokemon are really exciting. They definitely don't just have all the models sitting there ready to be put in the game. They definitely don't do that. Bob, there's $30 of value in these Pokemon that are in other games. And you can get them through these dens because these new areas in the DLCs are wild areas. Or at least a huge yes. amount of them is. Which is fantastic because mm. that is exactly what I wanted out of the core game. I wanted to travel to new important regions that were wild areas. Not travel through routes to get to cities. Uh, yeah. So that's really promising. I really like Hopefully that idea. The bike stuff is expanded. So yes. maybe there's like a rock climbing bike or something. And <laughs> like more traversal options. What is this, Death Stranding? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they came out in, in a similar time frame. <laughs> He's so good. I'm yeah. just like, fucking Professor Oaks on the phone with me. He's like, dude, stop. What are you, what are you doing? I obviously can't. How are you doing this? Stop it. Stop. There's a time and place for everything. But this not this. Hop, my name's Hop Boy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just so... It's more of like, man, this is definitely what more of the game was supposed to be. I, I mean, wonder what happened that made them make these awful roots. I, yeah, we talk about in the spoiler cast how, you know, the roots... Like, I theorized in the spoiler cast <laughs> that the wild area was the game. Like, it was supposed to be the thing right um so i'm yeah. really glad that these new regions are that because that's the exciting thing if these yeah. new areas were three routes and a city and a dungeon that would not be exciting like a wild area would be so don't don't say dungeon because after that one time when bob tweeted like the key item escape rope with what dungeons <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, no, there aren't any. Uh, don't worry, they already talked about you're going to be traveling the underground via co-op in the second DLC with your friends. <sighs> that being co-op is what upsets me. Why? That It's cool that that's there. I need there to be, like, dungeons in the game. <laughs> that like, aren't the, a that weird aren't, multiplayer mode? That aren't a multiplayer hole. Bob, I read that let it's me, mainly what? being the, this is going to be the Pokemon Den shit. So, obviously, they're going to talk about it being a co-op thing, because... That Eevee's just using a helping hand. That Magikarp's using Hydro Pump. <laughs> uh, let me let me tell you, Bob. What's up? The we've added a place underground where Pokemon exist, and you have to co-op through it for some reason. Is the most on-brand Pokemon thing they've announced about these passes. I know. It'll, it <laughs> like even during the spoiler cast, I, I'm I, I'm just shocked they didn't go in Spirit Tombs there. <laughs> during the spoiler cast, we <laughs> talked about how it would be cool to see them take the. Dynamax battles that we had before in the wild area and turn that into something more something that could actually be interesting um, So maybe this is that maybe you actually get to walk around with your friends and it'll be doing multiple battles instead of just one fight and then disbanding if this is post game Yeah, maybe they'll like include something that isn't a joke for four people <laughs> Maybe I mean, that would be neat their big thing with this co-op thing was saying go underground to fight and all the Pokemon they show is like Mewtwo and legendary Pokemon Galarian legendary Pokemon yeah it looks like they went hey I noticed a lot of people like legendary trio showing up in these games uh, we're gonna add a legendary trio it's the first legendary trio but it's now Galar versions I think those that, designs are cool those designs yeah, are neat up, holy shit I, I 
don't need my legendary trio to be an old legendary trio with a new coat of paint. That that's a real disappointment. But hey, oh, don't that worry, doesn't Dan, matter. There's also a new uh there's a new, you know, Reggie based on Charizard. Oh yeah, no, I noticed the Reggies. <laughs> I noticed the Reggies. There's a big focus on Reggie stuff in the second the second one. It seems the the second DLC, either because they you know, that's the one they're we're going to be working on the most because that's still far out is more exploration based and less like Pokemon battle focused like the league stuff because the first one was shown to be like you're joining a dojo and getting a sensei or something I have to wonder like since these are wild areas basically entirely like how are they going to have content like because all I mean, I have a different experience with the wild area than everybody else here because all I did was walk through it twice in that whole game. Right. Because I had that's all you had to do. So what are they? What's their idea so, of content in the wild? Area? So there's a giant open wild area and then you travel to a city to do story. The story. I, won't yeah, exist I imagine in the wild be like area. there'll be there'll be one or two towns connecting to it or, or they'll have like forced objectives in the area where it's like. Hey, I marked this on your road, Tom. Go over here. Yeah, I mean, like, that's the dream. The dream is that it's like Dragon Quest VIII or some other big 3D open world JRPG where it's like, hey, you go into the giant open area and there's a house and you can go to that house and stuff happens there or you can go to that city and stuff happens there or you can go to that cave and stuff happens there. Because the way that we, the, the art they showed us for these areas uh -huh. looks like there's a single structure in them. Like, each one looks like they have a building. And I'm like, is that the city? Is that just the city in the middle of this? And then you do the stuff in the city, and then that's it? Uh, I would put money on that, yeah. As a cynical bet, I would I would say, yeah, they're going to do the thing they kind of already did, where it's like, here's this huge open area. Go to that thing to do the plot. I, I imagine it's one, maybe two plot nodes, you know? Right. Per area? Um. But yeah, I can't be too upset about the legendary trios being an old one with a coat of paint because this isn't even in the core game. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, like what? Like it's just it's just something in a DLC. So it's not really like I guess that's neat is how I feel about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we didn't... I'm excited about new Pokemon and they look really cool. New old like Pokemon. Zapdos, who's like like a running chicken now. <laughs> And uh, Articuno, who now goes silence brand and uses its eye beams. <laughs> and then it crosses its arms and tells you the problem with YouTube. Stop it. Stop trying to ruin Pokemon. I, I do like that they put in Gigantamax forms for the starters, a thing that I yeah. thought was weirdly missing. That was that, so a bizarre. Thing that probably should have been in the, from the start. And, you know, I would argue against that. Maybe it wasn't supposed to be in that game. We don't know. Except for when you use Rillaboom's attack and it just stops the animation halfway through the attack. Yeah, it just clearly isn't done. In Gigantamax, or in Dynamax mode. So, yeah, that seems like something that probably should have probably should have been in the core game. Something that will be cool is I bet the uh, co-op underground thing will have really high shiny chances because it's a lot like the... um ultra wormholes in ultra sun and moon where that you would jump through and find the other legendaries from other games and those had like insanely high shiny rates hmm. i so remember i remember that i think i had to hit a setting to make it not use the fucking 3ds's gyro to move <laughs> Is bad What's up, Bob? Do you think that once they add all these Pokemon, they're going to up the number of Pokemon needed to get to get those uh, special items that get you higher chances of finding shinies and stuff? Uh, those won't be in the Galar Pokedex. They will be in the regional Pokedex. Or they won't be in a Pokedex at all. Yeah. Just like Sun and Moon. I was wondering if, if they'll do that will just not be in a Pokedex because they aren't going to have a national dex. What could they... I... I mean, they couldn't because then there would be weird grayed out numbers because 200 still doesn't cover all the ones that are missing. They might just have weird grayed out numbers. <laughs> or it'll be like, uh, oh, man, that's like a it, nightmare. It may just be exactly what you think. <laughs> what if it were that bad? <laughs> Chinichi Masada just says, do you think you're safe? And his hand comes out of my switch and grabs me. <laughs> They confirmed that you don't even need the DLC to get the Pokemon, like you can be traded them. 
Yeah, you can trade or use um Pokemon Home to get it from yeah, the Golden Pokemon Day. Jail. God. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's there. It's like I don't <sighs> And that's the thing, like you don't like when when people are upset about the National Pokedex, they're not upset that they can't get every new or every Pokemon in the new game, right? Right. They're upset that they can't transfer every Pokemon to the new game. So at least, you know, they're not being absolutely insane in saying you need to own this DLC for you to have this Pokemon that your friend can have. That would be bizarre. Yeah, that would be a yeah, that would another be, level. That would be the beyond worse. <laughs> yeah, it's but it still is Seems like this weird 200 Pokemon moron. Band-Aid for this 800 Pokemon gash. I think... Does anyone have a number on how many are missing? I know it's up around 400 total. Right. It's, yeah, so it's about it's half of the problem like solved, that. Bob? Who yeah. knows? Maybe there's a second year of content coming after this. Maybe, but that's that's even more That'd insane. Be crazy. Hey, man, think about it this way, okay? Ready, everyone? Uh -huh. We're going to close our I eyes would... and we're going to have a thought exercise. Here we go. Ooh, I love these. A finished game would have taken three years to make anyways, so two years of DLC to get the full Dex in works out okay. That math is fine. See, uh, my okay. thinking was, the longer they take to make the next mainline game, the more I mean, complete yes, it will be. Obviously! Right? I am for that! I am absolutely 100% for that. It sounds to me that their next game was probably going to be a Gen 4 remake that they had the people working on Let's Go making, and they went, we're not even going to be able to hit the standard we have with the last game, and people are mad at that. So we need another year. And that's why this DLC exists. But yeah, maybe, maybe they'll be able to do another two or do in two years of DLC, kind of like with Smash Bros. Maybe. They're like, guys, we're very excited to announce the Gen 4 remake. We put so much time into this. We hope you enjoy it. So it's one giant wild area. That'd be cool. <laughs> it it would be if it works out like I feel like your brain's working it out, but when I think wild area, I think mostly flat. <laughs> so if you can yeah. imagine it's almost a parking lot. <laughs> Until you hit that big mountain in Gen 4. Yeah. Oh, man. that That's a slightly elevated parking lot. <laughs> that's one of those um, indoor parking the garages. Parking lot. <laughs> they also said, um, I forget exactly what they said, but they implied there would they would be adding something for post game like beyond this content yes. which makes me think are they going to fix the battle tower oh that would be neat because right because right now it's bad it sounds like they're doing some hardcore battling challenge seems to be on their list of things where it's like when you finish this and they show you like they showed like some sort of outfit with a bunch of sponsors on it so it looks like they're gonna like update the league stuff or give you some hardcore challenges to do because there's not too much of that you can do aside from the the battle tower maybe they I would just like something on par with like the battle tree from sun and moon because that was really thorough and had a lot of cool stuff maybe they could also fix the online and not make it really bad because the they only give you 20 they only give you 20 minutes which makes most battles not involve yeah. thinking yeah, it's just mash the move. And I, you know, I saw plenty of people going, if it's 20 minutes, if the battle's 20 minutes, then you're taking too long. Anyway, it's like, have you seen these animations? Getting big takes a minute. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, people and I, I say this in the nicest way possible. People really have been super defensive, uh, which I understand why. But that problem was one of the ones where I was like, I I haven't even watched that much competitive Pokemon, and I know I know twenty minute matches are a real fucking noose. Like, I watch uh, I, I watch a few different accounts, and all of them said this is the worst online of any Pokemon game released. It it doesn't support Period. your friends list from the Switch, so that's fucking insane. What? <laughs> Just the i the yeah. idea that you can't you. you you can't finish fights. You can't think about what move you're going to use because you need to you need to rush it or else it's going to go to time and then decision. That's insane. Yeah, it's it's it would be great if they could fix the online and it would be awesome if they made something like the battle tower or drastically improved the battle tower and just made it great, you know? So I'm also, all for what feels said. Please please put in they're adding these new rivals. They're adding like the mentor guy who was Leon's mentor. 
maybe they're just adding in title defense from Sun and Moon where you could go, you're the champion, you can go face a challenger and it'll be one of like a pool of like 20 characters. And in Sun and Moon, there were guys that weren't nor nowhere else in the game. Like an yeah. insane dragon rocker would just show up and try to beat your shit in. Mm-hmm. And they have stuff on the level of a champion fight. And I thought that was really cool. Where it's, you don't know who's going to show up to try and challenge you. Yeah, yeah you can't really prep because it's a big pool. Once that yeah, I remember there being like maybe 10. We aren't. Or, the only thing good that could come of them remaking the game, like the typical way of dealing with mm-hmm. Pokemon. Yeah. Is they could actually make it feel done. Like now the, this game will yeah. eternally be like a bad game, but it might have great DLC. Like they, there might be two cool stories after the bad game you play through. Yeah. So like in the future, in theory, like if you own the DLC, when you go to replay this game, it's going to be like, you know what it is. And then if the DLC is great, then it'll be great. Whereas like platinum fixes a lot of problems of Pearl and Diamond. Yeah, there's so much, you, so many problems in the initial run of this game. Bob, are you trying to say that Pokemon Sword and Shield is the Final Fantasy 15 of the Pokemon franchise? I legitimately thought that while I was watching. Where, 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 where they direct. keep piling on yeah. extra shit, but it's still not fixing the main I, problems you personally have with it. I feel like nobody in the entire industry, not n- not just Nintendo, wants to be the person who's like. Here's the DLC that finishes the game. Because nobody's pulled that trigger yet. So, Bob, would you like to answer KZ's question? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, like, that's something a tag yeah, Final never, Fantasy 15 could never do. There is nothing yeah. they could add to that game that fixes it. They almost got yeah, to the point where it. they were going to do that, and then they, they cut the funding, and, he, and the director quit. <laughs> Oh, that was because so- everyone has different problems. Also, that was that wasn't going to fix. They were going to be like, yeah. whatever. We're making a new canon over the course of three one-hour episodes, and yeah. The, yeah. the writing was also just as terrible. Yeah, it was literally just going to be. Here's the ending where Luna and Noctis live, and so does Arden. Great, oh, great. <laughs> oh, oh, it's so bad. I'm not it, talking about it. It what was if- just going to be that art they released. Oh man. Okay, you you may know that ga- you know that game was fucking doomed when one time on a stream they said, "We're thinking about putting out a patch that's going to completely rebalance every enemy in the game." <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then they're like, "Maybe after that we'll do a hard mode." None of those happened. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to the Crown Tundra giving Hop a deeper motivation underneath everything that you didn't know about. We're going to do Hop side story, and you're going to play as Hop Ooh. as he does really important things. That'd be raw. <laughs> that would that would honestly just be surreal. I'm like, what are we doing right now? Um, it'll, I'm, it'll be I'm, exactly like 15, where it's like, Hop fell into the DLC cave. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to go and lose to Bead. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst. I got to go. Where are you going? Don't worry about it. And then buy this DLC to find out. And uh, Prompto falls off the train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm... And he gets new clothes off screen and they don't explain them. I'm also sad that we're seeing two new rivals, like one for each version, because mm-hmm. that, that just makes me feel like they're both going to be underdeveloped and bad, kind of like like the, the exclusive gym leaders in Sun Moon. Not Sun Moon. Sword and Shield. <laughs> Swish, yeah. Um, they are the worst gym leaders in the game because they don't do anything outside of their gym. Uh, that's true. They aren't very active in the plot. Yeah, like every other gym leader does something. You meet them outside their gym for some reason, they get to be a character. N- those two, no. It's like I, I bought part of the reason I bought Sword was like, oh, I think these designs are cool. I wonder if Bay does something. No, nothing. I- I'm, so- I'm sorry, Bob. I'm sorry. You should have been into Milo. <laughs> You should have been like, oh, Milo's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, Milo is pretty cool. Maybe he'll get to do something more. <laughs> At least he got to do something in his ge- or in the game originally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somewhat. Maybe they'll both be in, but on, like it'll just change which one foot you focus on. So they'll both they'll kind of be a little fleshed out. Maybe that would be preferred. Yeah, that would be a nice solution. Given that these are DLC things, I imagine that there's not going to be a shit ton of writing in this game. 
in these DLCs, where it's like, ah, maybe it'll take you like two, three hours to do the story, and then the bulk of it is exploring, finding the new Pokemon, and that kind uh, of thing. Like I'm not, I'm not expecting much in the story thing because these are wild areas where. The main thing is they wanted people to spend a lot of time in the wild areas, which is what happened to happened to me when I put like 25, 30 hours into, into them. You'll see, These are their big... they'll, they'll be as big as the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 one, which was 40 hours long. <laughs> <laughs> These are their big expansions that replace, that replace their like super version. The expectation should be we get new story. It's an RPG. I don't want to not have any story to go through, basically. That's insane. Whenever, whenever it's a discussion of DLC, I always temper my expectations on, like, what they're going to offer with it. So that's just a personal thing for me, not more of a, like, this is what I, you know, the reality. It's like when the K Kingdom Hearts 3 stuff came out, I didn't expect much. That's why I keep going, wow, you, I thought this would be, like, $20 in, like, two hours. So, so here's the thing. Uh, this is the same price as Remind, right? Right. It is. Is anyone $30. expecting this to improve the core game as much as Remind will? Well, it... <laughs> no, I don't think I respect no. anyone <laughs> Pokemon no. company is on the level I do. Square Enix? Not Square Enix itself, but that director. Nomura? Nomura, yeah. I mean, that's fair. If anyone compared Nomura to Junichi Masuda, I would cackle for a day straight and then turn to stone. I would assault them because... <laughs> I just realized in the DLC listing in the free patch for Kingdom Hearts 3, they're adding new cutscenes and new abilities for Sora. So technically, they're improving the main game for free. Well, this is too because you can receive Totodile, maybe. 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 <laughs> we my, don't know. My <laughs> shot. My shot is it will be more than we expect, but less than we hope. It's going uh, to be less than we hope because it should have the rest of the Pokemon. So, hey, Bob. Hey. Uh, here's my expectations for the DLC. Go for it. Mm. The DLC will be minute per minute a better story than most of what Swish is. Okay. Not hard. Right. I don't think it's going to be very long, though. I think it's going to be at most three hours per thing. And I think yeah, that sounds, that's the wild area is going to, in their minds, present most of the value. So I, I don't think there's going to be, you know, like a cool battle tower thing in the first one or anything like that. I think it's just going to be three hours of story and then a giant wild area. And the second thing will have a bit more, you know, like they were talking about with the underground areas and weird co-op stuff. Uh, the hardcore I, battling stuff because they only mentioned that after they talked about the tundra one well the the first one is growth and the second one is exploration the theme of this dlc is growth i lost my mind when they were <laughs> talking about that <laughs> uh but yeah i don't know i guess i guess this is better than me selling them trying to sell me ultra sword and ultra shield because i would have no confidence in that whatsoever so I just wouldn't buy it. Yeah. When they started talking, I was so afraid that it might happen because I can't deal with this shit now. I'm like, fucking, why do you have Pokemon news now? I want a break. That's where <laughs> yeah. I was. That's what I was expecting. Like people were talking about the next one, Gen 4 remakes. I'm like, no, if they release a mainline game in 2020, it'll be Ultra Sword and Shield. When they announced this Pokemon Direct, I legitimately got sad. I became unhappy because I didn't want to <laughs> think about Pokemon because it's so awful right now. I just wanted Pokemon to go away and come back with something great. I was a little surprised when they were like, we're ready to talk about it some more. And I'm like, are you? We got a very Bob, minor redemption arc from Jinichi Masuda. They could have announced this before the game launched. Mm, this, is not a, this is not a minor redemption arc. He has multiple months to move those move those lips oh that's right say something so caustically terrible I, again like this kind of thing was is fine when they announced it for almost every other nintendo game because every other nintendo yes. game released in the last like 10 years has felt really complete like you got your money's worth the first time out uh yeah you yeah, felt I, satisfied the, i feel like yeah splatoon 2 people felt pretty satisfied no one felt like 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, nobody. There was something missing or underpolished. Uh, uh, Mario Odyssey felt the same way to everyone who doesn't have a, a shark profile image on Twitter. Um, mm-hmm. I'm tr- Breath of the Wild. Yeah, Breath yeah. of the Wild. Yeah, like, also, the, anyone anyone who doesn't suffer like, from brain damage, Hyrule, I get you. Hyrule Warriors. Yeah, that game had a ton of stuff already. I'm trying it to. It has Fire too much. Here's, here's it the does. funny thing. We, Here's the funny thing. We started talking about Nintendo DLC, and this is why I have to do this out loud. Yeah. Because when I don't vocalize it, my brain gets stuck in the loop of, but Mario Kart 8 didn't have DLC. It should have. <laughs> it should have. My brain went, yeah, I'd love DLC for that. Wait, they never made more. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, it's coming to my mind that the games that the Nintendo put out that do, do have DLC, the ones where it feels a little bit worse are their multiplayer offering ones, like uh, the Mario Tennis one that they put out they put on, out dlc for, i thought it was free yeah. dlc on that or, or free dlc like oh, okay. like it came out okay. in, in terms of like free dlc where it's like oh, okay oh, maybe yeah, they didn't come out yeah arms is the same done. thing right oh and yeah, also arms. yeah also yeah. arms arms is but yeah those are free updates that's separate from like paid dlc yeah yeah i was just thinking in terms of just post-launch support nintendo is like it's either nothing or it's so much shit they inevitably package it as their own game. I, you know, I think the only long-term support issue I've had with a Nintendo game has been Link's Awakening, where they never patched it to improve performance. Yeah, they didn't patch that thing at all. But hey, we're getting a Switch Pro halfway <laughs> through this year, so that's Maybe like a Maybe that'll patch. fix it. <laughs> but yeah, my, no, my point say, was, was... What's, what's up? Was the other part was like, they couldn't have announced this before the game came out. They were having such a PR nightmare with everything around Sword and Shield. Yeah. To be like, um, the game isn't done, but also buy the DLC. There's all that still doesn't get you all the Pokemon, but please but, buy but it. But they also think about what they were showing at the time. So it's here's DLC. We've also not shown you 90% of the Pokemon here. They showed more Pokemon in this direct that are new that. than they did for the PR for Sword and Shield because they showed Gigantamax Blastoise and Venusaur, which is really funny that they were relegated to the DLC dimension. And then the main starters, which I just wanted to point out, Intellion's really great. He just makes a sniper's nest. <laughs> Does anybody else think it's weird how Intellion starts as like a crying little guy, becomes an edgy teenager, and then just gets a gun? Yeah, no, but he's a it's spy. Weird. It's pretty weird. What what do you now? I don't know what you're talking about. Lee Harvey Oswald's real cool. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bob. He's just that companion for Fallout New Vegas. <laughs> Bob, I, I know you love the designs in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Oh yeah, so and much. You should. Oh no. <laughs> how, how do you, how do you feel the new legendary is just a dude? <laughs> like there's no body type difference. There's no, he's just a guy. Yeah, it's, it's real bad. He looks exactly like a human. He's not even wearing a fursuit. It's like a human with a helmet on. (laughs) What? What? When they first showed it and they showed it was, it was like the colors of the Sword and Shield original, like the cover box art legendary. it's Magenta and Cyan. Yeah, I saw. Zamacenta and Zacian. Yeah, I thought that it was of some weirdo evolution of those two that went became a human, and I was uh, absolutely upset. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what Mister Feel sent me at one one o'clock this afternoon. I admittedly laughed really hard at here's the new legendary. It's just a furry guy. It is shaped exactly like a human. There's no even slight fudging of anatomy. Just a dude. Because I could feel Bob turning into a skeleton. <laughs> yep. Uh, I still like it more than Italian, but uh, it's not great. I also really, I also really like uh, Calyrex because he works out at the library. <sighs> I have never seen. So bad. I have never seen such a rush to. I work out the, at the library. That shit popped up eight times on my timeline. I mean, that's what they announced. They just announced the meme. Like, they showed this guy and the big brain dude. <laughs> just the meme. <laughs> Why is this Pokemon just memes? Like, the freaking... <laughs> the, the sniper nest in Tellian is also just a meme. What are you talking about? What do you about? mean? It's not a meme. <laughs> it's like it's that freaking thing where it's the, the kitten that's in the little, like, 
um, cat nest the, with the, the shotgun. The, the gun. <laughs> Look, Bob, this is what happens when you let Zoomers design Pokemon. <laughs> and also, what? The, the big brain dude's head just looks wrong. Like, that does not yes. look like it's just a deer's head attached to something else. What, uh, which one? Um, the, the big brain deer. Oh, Calyrex. The one yeah, I just posted in general that, in is here. Is that thing a deer? It looks like a deer head and nothing else it, about it, it looks it's like a deer. It's supposed to be a deer, yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's, it's so weird. Yeah, is that the okay. grass psychic one, I guess? Yep, it's grass psychic. It's... Mm. I've been seeking about Aqua Teen too much this last day. Um, mm -hmm. So seeing the big brain douche from Aqua Teen here is, hurts me. <laughs> yep. Now, one last thing about the uh, the Galarian uh, legendary birds. Yeah, I play. I played that uh, Pokemon fan game Which that had one? the edgy Insurgents? story about. Uh, I forget. I think Insurgents? so. The one that had the one, yeah. it was the really edgy one. Yeah, when well, you want the story to be good. Yeah. That's literally what I said. I want the story. Yes, I'll, I'll take the cults and the people getting fused to Pokemon. I want the story to be good. <laughs> oh my god. And he creates Pokemon. But what your starters in that are the Kanto starters with their types swapped and they all look super edgy. And that's the exact energy I got from the Galarian tree bird trio. They look okay. I'm trying to remember what they do. Moltres they look cool. Like I, th I think it was just. I think Moltres is just. I'm red now. <laughs> no, he's uh, he's like black now, and black and purple. Ah, uh, okay. I was trying to trying to remember. Are those literally the Galarian forms of those legendaries, or are they supposedly new Pokemon? Uh, they're explicitly the, the uh, they're supposedly Galarian forms. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, Nintendo said that. Pokemon I Company said that. So, I'll look right now. Because I, I think it's going to be the funniest shit in the world if it's like, uh, no, those weren't those were new designs, guys. I swear to fucking God, if they try to go, come up to me and say this ain't Zapdos. It's completely different. It, okay, well, no, it's I can't find official sources, but ev literally every single person is calling them that, including Sarabee.net, so I'm going to pretend. Oh, that's fine. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not out here to bust balls. I just want to. I no, just you're, you're want totally to know. right in doing this. This I, is this is a Nintendo thing that happens a lot, where they'll they'll make a statement about something, where they go, "No, we're not making an open world game with Zelda. It's open air. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strange game." And I want to and I want to hit you in the mouth because you're calling it a, an open air game. <laughs> but yeah. Um. My my feelings on the DLC announcement at large are complicated because I think this stuff would have been great to have and I'd like would like a post game just for the sixty dollars. Um, uh, I'll buy. Yeah, these. we haven't gotten I'll one check of those. Check them out. Since, uh, the DS. Yeah, it's almost like they peaked back then, but I don't know. Speaking of which, hey Bob. Hey, what's up? Uh, I was looking. You through don't even old, remember black and white? I was looking through old tweets. Uh huh. Uh, because of that meme that was like, "Hey, tweet like it's 2012." And so I searched what I was tweeting in 2012, and there was a there's a tweet I made where I was like, "Game trailers just gave Pokemon Black and White two a 7.2. Fuck these guys." <laughs> and then that was see, the same thing. That was thing. great because I got to tell you, see, it is a 7.0 franchise. You're lucky you don't live near me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so, there, you're gonna, there, you're gonna that was that the audio exact thing sending me. That was the exact audio review, or that was the exact review. Where they cut spoilers into the review. Yes, I remember. And then years later, I brought it up on an Easy Allies comment section. And then Bosman brought it up to the guy who cut that trailer. Or that review. Oh, no. Where he was like, hey, Damiani. Uh, this guy in the comment section says uh, you, you cut footage spoiling Pokemon in black and white too into the review. He goes, I don't remember doing that. And Bosman's like, I remember you doing that. I remember talking to you about this. <laughs> and then you just hear you gunshots. See, of course I, I, Kyle Bosman would remember that. And of course it was Damiani who did it. I just started glowing with energy because it was like a six-year football throw to me in the future of, don't worry, they'll eventually know. They'll eventually know.
feel what are yeah. these pokemon you've posted into general <laughs> oh those are the starters from that pokemon fan game <laughs> <laughs> why have you done this <laughs> no we yo, gotta end at, this podcast yo, anybody Delta else got Squirtle, something though. fucking relevant to say <laughs> Uh, okay, great. Oh yeah, this D this DLC. Uh it looks cool. I'm buying it. Um Yeah, I'm buying it. It looks I, I can't I, I, I I'm I'm looking forward to it as much as I I can when four hundred games I care about more are in front of it. At least it doesn't come out till June. Yeah. Yeah, not much else is in June, right? That's after Last of uh, Us. It's, it's going to be Last of Us t territory, but and it might hopefully. be the same month as uh Tsushima. Ah, uh, Tsushima's got to be later is, in the year. Last, yeah, Last of Us is the end of May. Tsushima will not be June. Okay, he said it. Now let's see if we can get it wrong. Yeah, let's see. I mean, if so, that'd be crazy from Sony's perspective. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'll be no, like, good I, job, Sony. We agree. Yeah, yeah, no, they, they, they are known for just shipping games out to die, though. So you know, <laughs> especially at the end of gins. Yeah, they're like something's got to go into this wheat thrasher. Yeah. Oh, I was. I'm, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Last of Us Two is May 29th. Yes, it is the next day. I guess the like, end of August for Tsushima. Nothing June is confirmed second. for June, June, as June. Of right now. Nothing. Good lord. Uh, on PS4 anyway. So yeah, Dan. What do you What do you do on the internet? What do you do? I don't know. Are we trying to leave? Are we trying to leave this podcast now? It's yeah, like I'm try I'm trying. I'm trying to tell you guys that in the next week we have I don't know, Detroit Let's Play? That sounds like something I'll say. Sure. Uh the Detroit Let's Play is gonna be really? coming out again. Sure. I'll say uh, that. Okay. It might okay. Even I can be say true. whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> Try and stop me, internet. Uh yeah, Detroit Let's Play, sure. That sounds good. Uh we're getting some important important behind the scenes work done uh which i'm not willing to talk about yet we over the last week released uh a pilot for a series we canceled that uh to to the main gigaboots patreon uh so people are 25 dollars or up on that get to see that pilot it's all right it's kind of funny uh an image of bob from it uh became a meme for a day on twitter so that was a whole thing <laughs> um and uh, yeah, we're going to be doing important behind the scenes stuff and I'm going to be shotgunning out Detroit and uh, I hope the audio quality is bad enough where every person who hounded me for new updates uh, regrets it. So <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> because it takes um, forever to edit that audio to get it serviceable. And that's why we have three mics now. So that way I never coming have out to do on the again. third Monday, the 13th, which is close to a thing you were telling me that. You're right. Might be happy. Oh God, I have Should to acknowledge we, it's real. You have to acknowledge. Oh no! That three days after I it on Thursday, now. January sixteenth. Should I just make these words canon? I feel physically ill saying. Then this. I'm gonna say them then. So starting on January sixteenth will be the first. Yeah, that's the the first. Dan. And friends and aggro and me, we're, we're all playing Kingdom Hearts 3 on stream. Yep, the final Avenging My Youth for Kingdom Hearts for the foreseeable future. Yes. Avenging My Youth Kingdom Hearts 3 with Dr. Aggro and KZ. It's going to be cut up into two parts because shit happened in December. Now we can't guarantee enough direct days. Uh, yeah, scheduling conflicts, but we want it to happen, so you'll have to wait for the 16th and then the 19th. Which yep, so that's Thursday and Sunday following this. Oh podcast. Jesus Christ! Just you guys love death, huh? Yeah, uh -huh. Mm. I fucking hey, go to the Golden Corral of Death, and I just get my plate full. Your parents are like, "Come stay here with us, son, forever." <laughs> it's the River Styx, <laughs> just going through a Golden Corral. Hey, if we, if we if we purgatory. Oh no. Maybe if we if we reach our stupid donation goal, we can come back for remind in a month or something. Off I'm sure wall. Agro will totally be interested. He will be totally interested in it, I'm sure. He'll he be said, psyched by the end he, of this. 
Dr. Agro said, okay, I'm going to have to have Google Documents open so I can try to keep a track of as much information as possible about we were talking this game. About it. He's like, I might want to get a whiteboard where he's just like drawing on it in the background in between like worlds. We've set up multiple <laughs> cork boards and he's drawing string between notes written on <laughs> each of them. One of them is a picture of ice cream. <laughs> I support the whiteboard idea because inevitably in the tail end of that stream, Agro's neurons will be dying and he'll just draw <laughs> KZ and do a word bubble and write, I have shitty taste and start. No, never <laughs> mind. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's going to be a great stream. Uh, two great streams on the 16th and I'm 19th. I'm glad that I got, to, I got to shoot you on this podcast and go, hey man, this is coming out three days ahead of the first one. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you all are too. Uh, but that's all I have to announce. Uh, KZ, aside from the pre-mentioned events, you got anything going on? Well, in preparation for those and the actual release of the Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC, I've been shotgunning content as much as I can. Uh, I finished production on the Nuzlocke, so that's sealed and done, and that's coming out over the rest of this month. Uh, I finished up AI, which that, that was already done. So I'm trying to get through Trails the Third as quickly as possible. That's why the videos are suddenly a lot longer. <laughs> so that I can so that I can move on. Because sometimes I'm like, fuck it, this will be an hour long video. We'll do that to like, you know, get things done in a more timely fashion. Because there's a lot of games coming out. Mm -hmm. So doing that, uh, hopefully I make a bit more, bit more progress. With that, uh, aside from that, no, there's nothing else uh, really going on. Um, I'll pivot to Feel. He does things. Hey, Feel, what do you got uh, coming out in the next week? I'll be streaming more Danganronpa at the very, if not, well, actually, hmm. Ted Cruz. I guess it'll be the Wednesday after you hear this because it normally would be Sunday, but I don't want to interfere with the death stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Splitting that game into two halves. Wednesday or possibly Friday, because I know there's no way Dan is going to stream on a Thursday and be like, I guess we'll play something on Friday. You have no idea what I'm capable of. No, that's probably almost certainly the plan. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why you were like... Oh, God. Uh, Dan I got would shoot assume. himself. He would shoot himself and others. He'll be like, we're doing it in two streams, so I, I, I can get rest. Uh, yeah, I'm not like, going to be streaming until 6 a.m. It's is stunningly <laughs> rational for Dan. Surely until we reach the second stream and go, we're really under pace right now. We can't make this three streams. But yeah, Hawk. someday this week. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! I hate you so much! Where? I'm keeping it in! I'm keeping that whole bit in! People yeah, be no. wondering, why that the fuck did, did he just die for 12 seconds? Thanks for listening to this episode of Big Think Dimension. This show, like our other podcasts, is only possible with the generous time our co-hosts have given to us and the equipment we've bought to make it higher quality and easier to produce. Please consider supporting our podcast series on our Gigaboots Podcast Patreon and look forward to more gamer premonitions and Big Think Dimension in the future. The Gigaboots videos for this holiday season have been brought to you by our generous executive producers, Vincent Pover, Nicholas Cameron, E. Lee Broyles, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Danny Richardson, Dryzart, Redblaze27, and Dandy Cageford. Thank you very much to our incredibly important executive producers. And also these guys. If you want to join the fight for good content, then go support us on patreon.com slash gigaboots to become an executive producer today.